What's going on, everybody? We are live. I think. I assume. I don't actually ever really know. <laughs> Today's gonna be fun. Sign writer script. Today... We are working on something that I haven't done in a while. Um, we are working on my favorite... Oh, this is dangerous to say. But I think that Spencerian sign writer's script may hold the spot of my very favorite um, penmanship style. Potentially. Maybe. I might regret saying that later, but that's how I feel right now. Uh, let me know, as always, music, if it's too high, too low. You see my whole head? Do you not, you, do you not normally see my whole head? Oh! Because <laughs> I'm not wearing a hat. Oh my gosh. That took me way too long, uh, to get. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a haircut the other day. Uh, Mr. Hard Rye, my great friend, incredible dancer, old dance teacher, and, um, and barber for many years now when I'm in Canada. Uh, gave me a trim the other day. And uh, I don't like to wear hats, right? Oh, I mean, I still do sometimes, but I usually don't wear hats for a good, like, week, week and a half after I get a haircut. Uh, I once taught, what was it, last year? Um, last winter, I taught a workshop in Poland, and I had got a haircut right before I left to teach the workshop. And one of the students at the end of the week saw me leaving the hotel, and I had a bowler hat on. Because I always travel, obviously, you guys know. Uh, I always travel with a bowler hat. Um, and I was leaving the hotel, and she was, she saw it, and she, she got, not, like, mad at me, but, like, disappointed sounding, I think. Uh, like, I gypped her out of a bowler hat, because I didn't wear one for the entire week I was there teaching. I was just, just my hair, because I liked my hair, so I didn't bother putting a hat on. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Free workshop. <laughs> I mean, this is... We're just not going to be a workshop, but I guess kind of? Because I'm just going to talk through a uh, sign writer's script sort of as I'm doing it. Um, know now that I'm rusty at this script. This is a script that I really would love. I want to be, like, really, really good at it. But I practice it not very often, so I'm not nearly as good as I would like to be. So my work might not be as stellar as it could be, but that's why we're practicing. Um, yeah, this is fun. What slant, slant, ang whoa, what slant angle are you working on? So these, uh, this is one of the page, uh, one of the pages from my notes. I gotta hear a little bug. Um, sorry, these are the, handouts or one of the pages of the handouts from my sign writer script class and I teach sign writer script at a 52 degree slant line um, in the book in the new Spencerium compendium it is shown at a 52 degree slant line I don't think I always write it at a 52 degree slant line and I'm not going to be writing with a slant lined guide sheet today i'm going to be using we're doing white ink on black paper again today um so my slant is going to be i mean 52 is the goal but it'll be hovering around above and below sort of that but 52 degrees slant line is the goal and i guess we may as well just get into it um please feel free to ask any questions <laughs> yes, this is my, one of my own creations, my bad pile, one of my bad pylon shirts, I have a few, um, that I made when the new Star Wars movies came out, uh, something, I didn't have it finished in time for the premiere, that was the goal, 
but this is the New Order Stormtrooper in traffic cone form. Uh, and on the back, in the Star Wars font, oh, bumped my whole desk. It has bad pylon. Because that's the bad pylon. Traffic cone that wears sunglasses. <laughs> this shirt's super cracked up and broken, though. I have to make a new one. And it's slightly off center. It was a rush make one day. I have to make a an official one, a better quality one, maybe screen printed, eventually. All right, so first, I just want to talk a little bit about Sign Rider's script. Um, please let me know again, as always, if the music is too high or too low. I'm gonna turn mine down ever so slightly, because I love this jazz music, but it's a little on the loud side at my place right now. Um, but Spencerian Sign Rider's script is seen uh, or is spoken about in my understanding knowledge only once um, i've only ever really seen it in the new spencerian compendium i remember the very first time i ever saw it like i'd seen that pdf many times uh from the iampeth archive over the years and scrolled through it read documentation looked at the spencerian stuff but for some reason i don't know i just never looked at or paid attention to the pages that had sign writer script on them um, until I took, I believe it was the Advanced Ben Syrian Saga with Harvest in Lake Geneva on the Lake, or Geneva on the Lake Ohio. And in her handout, she has the pages from the new Ben Syrian compendium of uh, sign writer script. It's not called sign writer script because on the pages where the exemplars are, I don't have them printed here, but on those specific pages, it's not called um, sign writer script. Actually, check it. I have this. Ugh. I'll show you guys this, but I'm not going to keep referencing this. So this is uh, one copy of uh, the new Spencerian Compendium. This was a reprint that was made, I believe, in the 80s. Not the super oldest vintage um, copy of it. But, oh, wow, that was lucky. So on page 144... Or 143, 144, you can see this is where it is in the book. And up the header is Spencerian script for signs and headings. Um, so that is what the title, or that's what it shows. And then it gives some examples of the writing. And this is what was in, uh, sorry, the alphabet, lowercase and capital, was what was in Harvest Notes. And then something that I didn't realize until a little bit later, unfortunately, the way this book works is the first portion of the book is what talks about the plates in the ending of the book. And in here, I don't have to find the actual page, but in the, the pages that explain what it is, what those plates were referring to, it uses, and it's the first, the only place I've ever seen it use the title, uh, sign writer script. Now, I don't know if that's the term that they actually used like all the time because it's not used very often uh sign writer script i don't i don't think was super popular primarily just because it's not seen a whole lot uh what's seen a lot more is madara script is what most people think of when they see this they think oh that's madara script um and sort of kind of they are very similar but to my eye they are also very very different uh, to me, Madara's script is engrosser script shading on some letter forms that are more geared towards Spencerian or ornamental penmanship letter forms. But the shades, to me, still resemble that of engrosser script, copper plate, uh, round hand. And so people will also say, oh, well, that's just, that's, a, what do they call it, freehand, uh, freehand, uh, engrossers or freeform engrossers, which is, I think, freeform engrossers is what Madara's script is. If you took his name out of it, that it, it is, it's freehand, freeform. I, I apologize. I don't remember. I don't know the exact word that, that is used or is more common, potentially both. Um, but the reason that I think they are different or that they look different to me, whether they are, whether they were considered the same by the penman. Uh, back in the day, they may have been. They may have been considered the exact same thing. Um, but when I look at the specimens from 
and these are great well these are my I wrote these for my handouts but the ones in that book are engraved so I don't know what the original specimen specimens actually look like I've never I don't know um but they could just be the different ways that different people wrote what would boil down is a heavily shaded Spencerian script. Um, but like I said, the reason I consider this very different is as a sort of blanket definition or explanation, the shades that are in this script, uh, this variation that we're working on today or that I'm going to be working on, the shades never maintain a constant thickness. At least that's the goal uh, when I do it. The shade is always tapering from a hairline to a thick line, and from a thin line back to a hairline. It never hits that thick point and stays. Uh, whereas in Grosser Script, uh, Copper Plate and whatnot, we all know you hit that, once you get to your ideal shade width, you maintain that down your uh, slant line, and then it closes at the bottom or at the top. Um, so that's why, that's where they're, they differ a lot uh, to my eye. Some people, they might look the exact same, but to me, they're very different. And when I first saw this in Harvest Notes, I remember saying out loud, I think Bailey was sitting next to me, um, Amy was beside her, I just went, I, I, I exclaimed, I don't remember the exact word, but then it was basically me saying, I don't ever want to do Engrosser Script again. And that's nothing against Engrosser Script. I do do Engrosser Script. I train it, I practice it. But when I saw this, it was like, well, this is just to my eye, in my own opinion, a more beautiful looking version of Engrosser Script. Is it more beautiful? Is it more elegant? That's in the eye of the beholder. Nobody can say yes or no to that. That's 1000% opinion. Uh, but for me, a lover of Spencerian and ornamental penmanship, this was just like, oh my gosh, this is like Engrosser Script, but the way I would want to do it. So I was naturally very drawn to this script. But then fast forward a long time, I never practiced it a whole lot. Uh, I sought it out in books and whatnot, tried to find more information on it. And really all I found was specimens of Madara's script or of a more free form or freehand and grosser script type style. Um, I've never seen another book that really teaches sign writer script. So, I decided to reverse engineer uh, the script, analyze the the few specimens or samples that I had, not I had, that I had PDFs of, and break it down to say, well, how would I teach this if I, how would I want to learn this? So that's what I did, and I created sort of a course. Today's not the course. This is not a, a class in sign writer script. This is just me practicing sign writer script and answering questions and talking about it like I would in the class. But it's not, this is not going to be structured or anything like that. Comments. I haven't really been paying attention to comments. What up, Martha? Martha has taken uh, Spencerian sign writer script uh, from me in Singapore. So she knows all about this style. What's going on, Devin? Welcome to the live, if you're still here. This seems tougher. This is tougher than Spencerian script. To me, it's tougher. Um, if I had to choose if toughness between Engrosser script, I personally believe this is tougher, but potentially not because it's also not as, I don't think as exacting as Engrosser script. So that's hard to gauge. Um, but it is insanely pretty. I agree, Fozzy. <laughs> what up, DC430? Uh, not business. This is sign writer script. Essentially, heavily shaded Spencerian lowercase letters. The capitals that I use for this uh, are regular ornamental penmanship capitals. There are capitals uh, in the book that come with it, but personally, I don't like the styles of the shade and whatnot they use, so... I don't know, maybe it's bad that I don't use them together, but I'm not a huge fan of many of those capital forms, and I think this looks really, really good with standard ornamental penmanship capitals, so that's how I do it. Sunriders is awesome. 
yes, my goal is to, I want everybody in the world to love Signwriter script. Um, because it's gorgeous, and I just want to see more of it. Because I'm selfish, so I want everybody to do it. For me. <laughs> Engrosser script makes you stressed. I mean, if Engrosser script makes, well, if Engrosser script makes you stressed, this is, in practice, it's pretty much the same thing. Just the, the shade and the forms are slightly different. But the speed, I think I may do it a little bit faster than I would do in Grosser Script. But, I mean, I think every in Grosser Script writer writes at a slightly different speed. Um, it's very similar, the way I write them anyways. When I can travel again, I would love to go there and teach it. I want to go everywhere and teach this script and teach all the scripts that I can do. As soon as we're allowed to travel again, I just want to not be here. Not that I don't love here. Here's awesome. Just been been here for a long time now. <laughs> yes, uh, Martha says trying to maintain the spacing is tough. And that is, for me, uh, that is the hardest part. That's what I have the most difficulty with is my spacing. And that's not specifically, I don't think the spacing is difficult because it's um, sign writer script. I think the spacing is difficult for me because I primarily do off, like off the cuff, Spencerian and ornamental penmanship where spacing, as long as I keep it consistent and none of, the, none of the downstrokes start with like a thick shade. So I don't have to compensate for those shades and the connective strokes are dashy, so they're sort of muscle memory taking in there. I'm not used to doing uh, slower drawn forms in long words. So it's the same with Engrosser Script. It's probably my biggest issue when I do Engrosser Script as well, is spacing. And that's just because I don't do it enough. Moral of the story, I should do it more. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to leave this here because we're going to reference this more as the day goes. sip of tea because that's important i have a lot of energy again i know i think this is a broken record i start every live like that but oh i do also hope to uh i want to expand last year was my first year teaching uh this script um on the road and i want to sort of expand I want to get better at it so I can teach it even better. Um, potentially more tricks. Not tricks, that's the wrong, wrong word, but more techniques. Different ways to break it down so that I can teach it a little bit more eloquently. The size of the letters, you're right, Martha. The size of the letters also plays a big role. Continuously without breaking the hell. Yep. What's going on, Jeremy? Jeremy also... Correct me if I'm wrong, Jeremy. I apologize for my terrible memory. You were in this class as well. I know you were in Art of Movement Writing. You also did... I can't remember if you were or weren't in the Sign Writer Script class. Were you? Part of me thinks you weren't but then part of me thinks you were, and I can't remember. So, let me know. Or just tell me you were, and then I'll, I'll just assume you were. But I, I, I apologize, I can't remember. Thanks, Manfred. It's my bad pylon uh, stormtrooper. It always, it always gets comments at airports for some reason, and when I go through airport security, the security people are always like, Yo, cool shirt, where can I get one? Always. Not always. A lot of the time, though. <laughs> I have to make more. Maybe I'll sell them eventually. If you guys don't know about the Bad Pylon, Bad Pylon is a character of mine. And it's, I mean, I have a traffic cone obsession, so he has an Instagram as well. It's not super active, but just so you know. You didn't take the class. Right, because that was in the other location. You weren't in there. So I was going to say Jeremy knows what this is about as well. But he doesn't. I 
I miss that whole trip. I apologize. That whole trip is is bungled up in my brain because I was on the road for. I was like basically a month in Southeast Asia, and I can't remember where I was and what I did. I can remember it was all incredible, and I had a blast. But now it is all muddling together. Quarantine has broken my brain. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yes, I remember rowing. That's what we did in the Philippines. We, uh, Fozzy told me that she'd signed us up for rowing class. And in my brain, I thought, dope, we're going rowing. I thought legit like we were going to go get in boats. I'm a huge, I like canoeing a lot. But I'd never done like actual like speedboat rowing. So I thought that's what we were in for. I was like, we're going like rowing. That's so cool. Um... No, it was at a gym, and we were on rowing machines, and Fozzie made me work out. Uh, it was challenging. <laughs> Finally along... Oh, yeah! Normally I write with my little busted holder. Um, so this, uh, many of you know I carve holders. This is the bowler head holder. Where is it on there? The tiny little bowler head on the end and a really long, thin tail. This is the very first holder that I ever carved. Um, this was before the Indianapolis, my first Iampeth convention. Uh, pen maker Brian Smith at Unique Obliques um, was going to make me this white and black striped pen. At first, it was posted as a joke to convince me to go to the convention. Um, cause at the time I was still heavily working as a professional dancer and it was really hard to book or to say, yeah, I'm going to do this convention on these dates because in professional dancing in like the TV movie industry, you could be booked on something tomorrow and you have to be on set the next day after that, but you don't know until tomorrow. So it was really hard for me to make commitments. So people were trying to convince me to go, um, so he made it, and uh, once I ended up, once I confirmed that I was going to be there, and then I asked him, just on a whim, I said, could you leave, like, a chunk of wood on the end? Uh, and he did. He was, I mean, thankfully, I would have never started carving pens if he hadn't, but he said yes, and he left a, I don't honestly remember how big it was, it's many years ago now, left a, a big chunk of wood here on the end, and I whittled it down into a tiny little bowler hat. I had never carved anything before in my life. I didn't know if it would work. I figured if it broke or if it didn't work, I would just snap it off and I would have a standard tail. That was sort of, worst case scenario, was a standard uh, finial on a pen. But it turned out really great. Um, but unfortunately, the pen, for, for my grip, I used it for a while. Uh, back then, I was still using a modern grip. I was writing slow. I hadn't started uh, movement writing yet. And when I started transitioning into movement writing... Uh, the pen was slightly heavy for for my grip. Um, it is it is ebony wood, which is very dense, and it's a heavier wood. And the the grip is was longer and much thicker, or not much, but thicker than the pens that I was that I had got used to using, because I use relatively thin nib or thin pens. So this past, I guess a couple weeks ago now, I had decided I was going through some of my pen collection, and I started, uh, I looked at this pen, and I said, this is a gorgeous pen, and I want to use this pen, but the only way that's going to happen now, with my hand trained the way it is, is to modify this pen. Luckily, over the years, I've messed around with pens, and, and I've carved things before, so I, I was confident that I could modify this, this little pen without ruining it. Uh, so, I, and I removed the flange, I ended up sawing off about a, between an eighth and a quarter of an inch off the end, so it's shorter, because um, there was quite a long, a long no nose. I don't know if that's the right term or not. Um, sanded down the barrel. I, this tapered a lot slower, so it was still thick in here, and I think that's where a lot of the weight that I needed to lose was. So I sanded all of this down so it tapered quicker into the, the thin tail. I didn't thin the tail much because it was already super, super thin, 
and now it feels great. Uh, I fitted it with an old Zanarian flange. Uh, there was nothing wrong with the other flange. I just like the look of the silver flange rather than the brass flange. Um, and this is traditional design, so it's held in there with a toothpick. So I could pop this one out and put the other one back in if I wanted to. Uh, but I modified a, a vintage Zanarian flange to fit in there nicely, and it feels good. I've been using it the past couple days uh, for ornamental penmanship, um, and I'm going to be using it today for Spencerian Sunrider script. The biggest difference that you won't notice on the big camera, but you may notice in the little camera here in the face cam, is the angle. Normally, my paper angle lines up approximately, when I sit down to write, the angle of my pen goes, to, for, to my viewing angle, goes along the paper. So my 52 degree slant line, or 48 degree slant line, somewhere in there, is directly shooting out from my body. But I write a Sunwriter script with a modern grip, so I change the pen to a modern grip in my hand. And as you can see, that dramatically changes the angle, the pen is at that angle, now it's at that angle. Um, I could modify the pen so that when I hold it this way, the nib still sits at my ideal angle. And I do have pens that are modified more like that. They're the ones that I commonly use for Engrosser Script and stuff like that. Uh, the one that I used to teach Signwriter Script when I was on tour um, was like that. It was modified a little bit more. But I'm not wanting to modify this flange, but I want to write with this pen today. Um, so the angle of my paper, I rotated my camera a fair bit from where it normally is, and I'm modifying, uh, or and I rotate the paper quite a bit so that I will be writing, uh, holding the pen in a natural position, and the nib will be at 42 degrees slant line to the page, because that's, as we know, most important. Or, very important. Huh. That was a lot of talking. Sorry, I'm chatty today. Motormouth Mike. Motormouth Mike. I'd blame the tea, but it's not the tea. It's just me. All right, well... Maybe we should stop talking and do some writing. I don't really have any plans on what to write today. I figured I would just sort of chat with you guys and scribble along. And then if you guys have... What's that little... I got him. Caught a fly. Sweet. Oh, I didn't catch it. Killed it. There we go. <laughs> so one of the neat things about this form and one of the hardest I find this style relatively difficult because there's a lot of little things um, to think about I don't know that they had all these, these things in mind when they used to do it or when they if they even used to teach it but after examining the examples of it, there's a lot of things uh, to keep in mind. I'm going to try to keep my posture good. This is one of those scripts that makes I start to get really bad posture. So I'm going to bend at the waist and practice what I preach and keep my posture good. But you will see a lot more finger movement today. So the neat part... Yeah, let me zoom in a little bit more for you. sort of talk through Ooh. talk through what I'm doing a little bit so this style is based on a very condensed oh and I don't know exactly the the thickness of this it's about I would say the thickness of this is about the width of one this of one letter which is about, if I'm correct, half the height. 
So the whip, just like, like in Spencerian, the width of a U is the same as the height of a U, whereas in Signwriter script, the width is half of the height. That's what it seems like anyways. So that's about what this little oval is, and it is one X height and three quarters high, so just off of the other one. And then the way that works is the for this stroke here i wish i could get zoomed in anymore sorry my camera i don't think will let me focus if i go any closer will it come on nope it can't darn it sorry in twisting the camera i must have set it up a little bit farther away but the the left side of this shade follows this oval so it's continuously going this is why i say it doesn't maintain a, a solid thickness. It's following this slightly rounded form. In the center here, it's almost straight because it is a long, an elongated oval, but it's not quite straight. And then the other side is a straight line along the 52 degree slant line. So it's the tines are moving completely like one is going around, the other's going straight. Um, as you as you create that shape, sometimes easier said than done. Uh, the forms are also like, unlike in Grosser Script, where you have very rounded forms. The forms follow the principle, whoops, the principle of Spencerian, where they're sharper at the top and the bottom. If that makes sense, I wasn't supposed to make this a class. Whoops wanted you guys to understand that little fundamental. So that's sort of the thing that comes into play for all the lowercase letters. If you were to do like the downstroke of the of the N, for example, the second stroke. The same thing applies, except this time the left side is a straight line along our 52 degree slant line, and the right side is rounded as if There's an oval. Again, one X height and three fourths of an X height down. I, the reason they, the, the proportions are, are different in this than Spencerian script. Like in Spencerian, the ascenders are three times the X height. Um, whereas ornamental penmanship, it varies, but it's taught four times the X height. Um, where an ascender in Sunrider script is two and a quarter times the X height of uh, a, a fully extended ex ascender. So they changed the proportions so that it would look good on a sign. This is designed for signs and for headings and things like that. Uh, traditional Spencerian, when those forms are followed and they're, and they're written quite large, they can tend to look awkward to some. I still think they look pretty beautiful, but it was the the opinion of the of the Spencer brothers that this script looked better with a slightly modified um, with slightly modified pr proportions. Yeah, knowledge. Then I'm gonna teach one more little thing here. Uh, when I say the the width, I'll talk about width because that's that's one of the main things I'm gonna be trying to focus on for spacing. So this is supremely in my head. I'm gonna write a large one here. We have our entry stroke. It's like a capital or a lowercase u, for example. So there's my first down stroke. I'm measuring my width from. We have the width of the shade from this first one to one, one line width here, or half of the X height, approximately. From there would be where the next hairline would hit, and then the shade 
This is another thing that gets this is not complicated for somebody who does a lot of engrosser's grip because you're used to it, but you have to move over and start that stroke farther so that your shade can come to that hairline because these go all the way up to the X height and then we come down. And then again, exit stroke approximately, I'm shooting for that half, half width, if that makes sense. Yeah, and that's about it. Uh, connective between letters, uh, as you know in Spencerian script, it's, it's one, uh, sorry, it's one, um, from like an I to a U. I'm doing a really bad example here because your space between letters is the same as one letter, basically. Um, whereas here it's half, but then your space going into a compound curve letter in Spencerian is one and a quarter. Whereas in uh, in Signwriter script, and this is just my thought process, the spe the spacing in Signwriter script for a compound curve stroke is one and a half. Do you lift the pen when you change direction like in Engrosser script? Uh, do you mean, so when I change direction, so like when I go up to down, you kind of have to lift a pen in that, in that instance, like doing this stroke, you pretty much have to lift. Because if I'm doing my entry or my upstroke here, if I were to shade without lifting my pen, I would, well here again, I'll do a really big one so you can see a little bit better. I would get that, which ends up looking like my entry stroke just went to the halfway point, which wouldn't be bad if I was doing like a, a T, for example, that would be one way you could do a, a lowercase T because the T only goes up halfway, the entry stroke from it. Um, but for, for strokes that the shade starts on the top, the shade ends up on the left side of the straight line. <laughs> this is where I remember in class, everybody got really, it was really confusing because it's left side of the straight line in the 52 and the, it's the way I, it's, so it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of talking and a lot of things to remember, different instances, but it's a lot easier to understand than it is to articulate in words, if that makes sense. So you have to lift, what I was saying, as I do this entry stroke, because I want my shade to start to the right of this exit stroke. So I have to lift and drop my pen right here to start that next one. So the tines push over. If I could force my right tine over to the right, then I wouldn't have to shade, actually, just for fun. It's not gonna work, I, I, I guarantee it right now. You'd have to do some funky pen twisting, but just in the interest of science. If we do our entry stroke here, I'll do another large one. And now, naturally, you can see, especially with this pen right now, my pen is a little bit tipped this way, which is, I do that a little bit just because it makes it easier for me to square off the tops of my shaded strokes because it's easier to push out the left tine when there's a little bit of slight tip in that direction. Um, I don't do that as much when I'm doing ornamental penmanship because of the speed. If you do that, then things snap and thing, it just doesn't feel right. But when I'm going slow, I do a little bit of that rotation. But in this instance, I would have to go the opposite way. So I would go like this, I would Oh, I guess I could also just draw a straight line and then do the shade. Potentially, that would work if I didn't want to lift my pen. But I personally would just drop it. So your uh, hairline ends up right beside your uh, your shaded stroke. Now you can see the, pro the an issue, I'm gonna say the biggest, but everything I've talked about so far, I've prefaced as my biggest issue with this script. <laughs> um, right now, if you look at this stroke, we have my straight line that's on, we'll say approximately the 52, I'm probably not exactly 52. And then 
This other side is also a straight line, which is not what we want. It needs to remember, follow that slight curve. That's the hard part. It's really, it's, it's a lot easier to make them just even pull the taper down, but to get the left time to go to curve constantly. And in grosser script, you, it's, it's a tough thing. You get that, you get that, uh, that time to curve at the, at the very end. When you're coming down, you get your curve to go in. So it cuts off. So you're essentially your, your right side stays straight and your left side is straight until it curves at the last moment. You get that nice rounded bottom that looks so dope. Whereas in Sinewriter script, it has to curve from the very start because that's the apex. That's the very middle of this little oval. So you have to start the curve there and it continues curving all the way to the hairline point at the long axis. You change the direction of the nib while writing. Uh, the rotation, a little bit. Uh, I think the only real rotation I do is when I push the tines out, it'll probably go slightly like this. I'll rot uh, As an extreme example, I rotate it like this, but just just a very little bit to pull that tine out, and then it goes back, or ideally it goes back flat again to pull the stroke. Any of those sort of rotations that happen are subconscious they're not so much me thinking cool rotate my pen pull the stroke let the rotation go and then come out they're just they're sort of subconscious my fingers are rotating and just helping so you, you can feel the tines as they sort of dig into the paper so you're just sort of make it make it wow making it easier on yourself subconscious rotations man you just gotta let it happen just gotta get some get some ink on your nib put the nib on the page and just subconsciously rotate So basically the way I would want to get good at this script or what I would normally be doing in a regular study session with myself. These are also quite thick shades, I think, for this X height. Um, as you can compare, this X height is larger, but the shades are about the same. So the shades are much finer in daintier for lack of a better word than what will feel sort of natural because of what we're used to in an engrosser script and just when we shade we shade big um spencerian lowercase letters we really can't shade that often so they don't get the opportunity to shade big so all we do is shade the capitals so when we get the opportunity to shade we usually go too far um this script can look really beautiful written like, if I were to just shade a little bit so there was just a slight difference. In my downstrokes versus my upstrokes. Slow. People aren't used to seeing me write slow. something like that like that's it's hardly difference between the hairline and the shade uh, I got a little bit bigger as I went with the with the D the D could have been a little bit less but it's it's super dainty and it's just like a it's just a dusting of uh, of what's the word I'm looking for fancy it's just a, it's it just makes it look so it's a dusting of Gorgeousness to me.
So I always have to remind myself, like, tone it back. You don't have to shade really big. It can also look cool shaded big. Um, but the, the even taper, I think, this is, again, just an opinion thing. It's not written anywhere. I think an, the even tapered stroke of Signwriter script looks better finer than it does thicker. Uh, it can be done thicker, but then the taper, I think it tends to lose a little bit of the sort of airiness and whatnot, and it starts to look a little bit heavy. Not to say that it can't be done and it can't look awesome. I just am not as good at it, basically. Is there any other nib that makes it easier to get a thinner shade or smaller X height? Um, I mean, yes, if you wanted to, like, you could use a Nico G or something like that for this script. Um, because for a Nico G, unlike in ornamental penmanship, um, whereas these are slow controlled shades, uh, it can be quite difficult using like a Hunt 101 or a Lennon Principle or a Gelat 303. It can be quite hard to control that shade. Just like in doing in Grosser script, it's hard to keep that even thickness all the way down, you know, if you use a really, really flexible nib. If you use a less flexible nib, um, then you it's a little bit easier to control that pressure. Uh, my favorite for Engrosser script is to, I don't remember the name of, I have some nibs in, in there that are, I don't like them from ornamental penmanship because they don't shade big enough, but they're super, super flexible or easy to flex, but they don't flex wide. So I can easily get to the thickness, but then if I press harder, it doesn't really get any thicker. They just hold that thickness. So it, it, it's sort of like a, I don't know, it's cheating, but it's a, I mean, it's a nib, so it's not really cheating. Um, but yeah, Hunt 22, uh, Estherbrook 358, um, like a Zebra G, so it's super fine and like, Easy to, like, relatively easy to flex, because you don't need movement flex, right? Like, you don't need something to be like a Hunt 101 flexible. Um, you could do this with basically, just like in Grosser Script, I think you can do them with any nib that can flex to the thickness you want, you can, you can do it with. It's just personal preference of which one you like it better with. Ornamental penmanship can be really difficult with some nibs. Um... Whereas this, because you're going slower, you have the ability to just to press a little harder. Things like that. I still do it with uh, Hunt 101. I don't remember what I used when I taught it in Hong Kong and in Singapore. I don't recall. Did I teach it in Hong Kong? <laughs> I don't even remember. Ooh, enjoy your hunt when hunt twenty twos when they arrive. It's a nice nib. I mean, Martha, you can use a Nico for OP. It's just hard. I I don't like using the Nico G's for OP. It can be done, but the paper ends up buckling way too much for me when I try. A few times I've tried to like prove a point just to show that you can, and it's just really hard. Because you have to press so hard. I feel like a bodybuilder. I, I don't like working that hard. Um, I like the 101s and whatnot. Because you work hard in other ways. You work hard in finesse. You don't work hard in muscling it down. I'm not good at being a muscly penman. Speaking of muscly penmen, I just, like minutes before I started this live, finished listening to the calligraphy podcast uh, episode with Jake Weidman on it. Um, I'm a binge listener of the Calligraphy podcast. I uh, am not good at following along week by week or as they release them. I sort of wait till the season is pretty much done and then I listen to them all in like two or three days and I just finished uh, Jake Weidman's one. It was super awesome. I wish I was able to drop one-liners and sound a quarter as eloquent as that guy when I talk about script and things like that. He makes me sound like a two-year-old. <laughs> it was awesome, though. If you haven't heard it, uh, or any of them, go check out the Calligraphy Podcast. 
and listen to all of the episodes because they're wicked. This season they had Suzanne on there talking. They had a wicked um, interview with Joe Vitolo, which anytime you get to hear him talk about anything to do with penmanship is always a pleasure. Um, but yeah, check them out because they're awesome. All right. That looks really pretty. I'm not really terribly mad at the spacing either. Right on. Okay. What should I write? I need some words to practice. The A I always find challenging in sign writer script, more so than the other letters. It always looks too big for some reason. Um, it is just one of those letters that gives me strife. That's what I think I, I may like the most, or one of the things I really like about this script is, for example, crossing the T. It doesn't look weird. It totally fits in to, to accentuate or to flourish off of these letters the way that I normally flourish. Because they, I just think they look gorgeous with natural um, Spencer and ornamental penmanship flourishes. Because, I mean, it is ornamental penmanship at the end of at the end of the day. Ah, Cut the Craft podcast. I need to dive into that one as well. I need more podcasts. Never been much of a good podcast listener. I like them, but I never end up finding them. I only listen to them when a friend of mine says, listen to this podcast. And then I do, and then I love it. And then I go back to audiobooks. Um, and then somebody else says, listen to this podcast. And I do, and I love it. And then I go back to audiobooks. I'm an audiobook junkie. <laughs> I just finished the Harry Potter series again for probably, honestly, the, I don't know, probably 20th time. Maybe at least. I've listened to that series so many times. Potterhead, heck yeah, for sure. This chair is squeaky. Sorry, I don't know why my chair is so squeaky today. Maybe my jeans are squeaky. Squeaky jeans. When you wash your jeans and you know they're clean, there. Dicka 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 squeaky jeans. It's a jingle. If any of you guys want to start a jean company, go ahead. <laughs> Ascenders are so crazy with this style. Um, they go, like I said, two X heights and a quarter. Um, but there's a compound curve inside them. And this is the sort of one that it doesn't happen on everyone in the books. 
uh, they didn't engrave them the exact same uh, every time. So I'm assuming they didn't write them the exact same every time. But I sort of picked my favorite way to do it, and that's what I strive for. Um, just like any shaded down stroke, where the rounded portion is on the right, and the left side, or the, the shade is on the left side of the 52 degree slant line, of the straight line. When you come down, because you're not curving in, let me go down the line. On the ascender stroke, your down stroke, I'm gonna sort of reverse engineer it here. I'll try to show it with this H. So it's the same thing. The left side of this shade is my 52 degree slant line that goes up until about the X height. And then at that point, it then cuts into the loop. So the loop is going, if I were to start it up there, it's going around to the left, coming in, and then down on the 52 degree slant line. So it's this little like compound curve. Now that looks weird because it's curved and then straight, but keep in mind that this side, once it gets to this straight point, this side is going to be tapering and getting that nice curve shade. Like so. So it's it's made of a compound curve. In ornamental penmanship, um, the best ornamental penmanship writers, this is what this is how they wrote their their ascender strokes and descenders too, I believe. But it was something that was like a subconscious thing. There ended up being like a little Whoa, my paper is at a crazy angle for ornamental penmanship. But I'll try to keep that angle. They'd have this little, as it came up, I can't do it. As it came down, there would be this very slight compound curve sometimes. Um, I'm always cautious to teach when I teach uh, ornamental penmanship or the art of movement writing. I never teach the compound curve. I'd mention the compound curve, but you shoot for a straight line. And because of the movement and the speed, the compound curve kind of just happens. Uh, the interesting part then with uh, sign writer script is you don't have that speed. Ideally, I would love to be able to do this script at speed, but is it possible? Maybe. Is it possible for me? Maybe. Will I ever get there? I don't know, because it seems like that would be insanely difficult, but it is a goal of mine. Um, But yeah, that little compound curve that can sometimes feel awkward, I end up getting it a little, it's it's a slight compound. I end up compounding it a little bit too much quite often. You'll notice also in the in my movement and in the face cam, I still do my regular ornamental penmanship sort of warm-ups because any long strokes, most of my pulls, although they're not done with with rapid movement, the movement is still coming from my arm. I'm not. I'm still not drawing my whole long stroke up here, because what happens when I use my fingers to do those long strokes? If you see, well, here, let's use this camera. As I use my fingers, this would be the page. As I use my fingers, my nib is going away from the paper and to the paper. The fingers, the way they're situated, are not ergonomically designed to keep the nib flat. Uh, the wrist will keep the nib flat, but you can't go really, you can't stretch your wrist like you can your fingers. Um, and you can't stretch your forearm, you can move your forearm, but that movement isn't stretching your forearm, that's your upper arm pushing your forearm forward. So my, my movement is still coming from my arm. I'm still using, it's this combination movement technically, but I'm still using my forearm to get that out there and then I use my fingers and and my wrist to add the the curved shade, to add the shade, to get the little curve in there. Um, so the whole thing isn't uh, movement writing, like when I do ornamental penmanship. But it's still in there. It's not like, we're doing slow, so we're drawing with our fingers. Because you won't be able to get, or maybe you will, I won't be able to get these long, nice, extended forms with 
uh, with just my fingers. It will feel not nice. Another neat thing to note, that shade is, you would assume, um, just like in Engrosser script, you would assume, that's a terrible example of it, but you would assume that it's completely even. Like how when we do flourishing, we have this compound curve, and we shade from that portion to that portion, straight out and curving in so we get this nice even shade right in the middle of our of our straight line where for some reason uh again not sure if it was intentional or not but in um in sign writer script uh that downstroke i'll do a large one That downstroke, the right side seems to be more often than not longer along the 52 degree slant line than the left side. You can see the left side, there's this space all in there. There's much more space um, on the left side than there is on the right side. The right side doesn't follow the 52 the whole time, but it follows a lot longer than the left side. Whereas if you'd showed me this script, like initially, it's like, oh yeah, it's just an even, just like in Spencer in the a pull straight, uh, it'd be even on both sides, but it's not. And it's not always the exact same. Um, maybe they were trying to make it uh, exact and just the person who did, who penned those original examples, I don't know who it is. I suspect that it might've been Lyman. Um, Spencer, but I honestly don't know. Um, somebody else might know. Maybe Dr. Joe would know. But more often than not, in the examples, the right side follows the 52 longer than the left side. So that's how I broke it down and decided to make that the law in my brain of how I was going to try to write it. And that also applies when you're writing like The lowercase r, for example. This line doesn't follow perfect the whole time, but versus the left side, it follows the 52 degree slant line a lot more than the left side. I hope that's visible for you guys and not too far away. If I do this again on camera, I'll try to get the camera a little bit closer, or I will use a macro lens or something like that. I want to go lens shopping the next little bit. Try to get something that's a little better suited for my setup. For the letter A, should it be done like the capital C? Or it can be longer? Like the capital C? We will reference, well here, I'll show in my notes here, which you have, Martha. <laughs> okay. So, like Spencerian, uh, the O, in the capital O in Spencerian, the thickest part of the shade is the opposite slant line, which we know already in Spencerian, so that's our thickest portion right there. That's the same, uh, it seems to be the same anyways. In Sign Rider script, our O is on that angle, and our shade is nice on that side. So that is the same as the C. 
The C is basically written like the left half of an O. Left half? Half of an O without the right half. If we were to come up here and finish it, then we would have a nice O. So it's not curved as much like an A. I'm not exactly sure what you mean by the by a capital C. Because a capital C shade, the shade is quite high, I guess. Depending, ornamental penmanship, different penmen sort of had different interesting ways of doing the C. But for this, for the C, I would do it like a small capital O without the right side uh, written. Sorry, I have been totally ignoring uh, the chat and just blabbing about sign writer script. I haven't done this in a very long time, and today feels like a like I'm super geeking out over it myself. Like I'm talking to the camera, but all of these examples are me talking like, oh yeah, and when you do this, this is this blah 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 blah. This is me sort of re going over all the things I love about this script because it's gorgeous. This is not supposed to be a class. I know I'm basically walking step by step through it like a class which I guess is okay teaching is cool um I do teach this style as well uh, I don't have any classes on it right now obviously but let me see what other comments here I've been ignoring the chat do 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 Jenica what's going on Jenica what kind of script is this Spencerian Sandwriter script or heavily shaded Spencerian. It doesn't, I don't know if Sunrider script could be called an official name. It's called that in one book, in one little article. I mean, it is quite possibly the best Spencerian penmanship book ever, but it's only said in that book. So you are achieving the ascenders with wrist movement, correct? There's, there's wrist movement in there. I'm... A lot of my f my distance is being done with my forearm and then my sort of side to side getting the loop in there. A lot of that is with my wrist. So everything's sort of working together, um, but it is drawn. So there is a the wrist and the fingers and everything come into play a lot more. Um, I would say my, fing my wrist this is going to be a blanket statement and doesn't work for everything, but I would say in general, the form, I try to do as much as I can with my arm, but the wrist comes into play to create the the smaller movements, like not the big long lines. Uh, and then the fingers, ideally, only really come into play for the shades. They are what give me, uh, that create the taper, and they're what I'm using for my shades. I hope that made sense. Form, arm, forearm, wrist, Shade, fingers, and probably a little bit of wrist as well. Everything kind of works together. Subconscious, man. <laughs> Aha, Jenica. So at the beginning of the video, I talked about the differences uh, between Madara script and Spencerian sign writer script. Let me read the comments really quick to make sure that somebody might have already answered that because Everybody in the chat is being super helpful and wicked today. Madaraz, what the hell? Yeah, so Madaraz, the shades, uh, he would use Spencerian forms. Um, so he would use the, the sharper tops and bottoms, unlike the rounded ones of Engrosser script. But in his shades, the thickness and the transitions, um, to me, look more like Engrosser script shades. Whereas the shades in this style that I'm trying to replicate today, the shades follow the principles of Spencerian shading rather than the principles of Engrosser script shading. Those differences are minute, but they are there. Uh, I see them. I don't assume everybody sees them until they get used to those two different scripts relatively well. Um, but for the most part, uh, Madaraz's script, Madaraz's script looks more like Spencerian forms with Engrosser script shades. 
again, that's not always. He would have done spe uh, specimens that look more like this as well. But on average, what is known as Madara script is that. Ooh. Two seconds. Let me see if I can find it. A printed example. Um, so there's all the... Everybody knows the famous ones from Madara's uh, book and whatnot. But let me see if I can find... Yeah! So, these weren't done by Madara's. <clears throat> no ink. So this is a catalog of script cuts from the Zener Bloser Company. Let me zoom out so you can see them. So these were script cuts, uh, signs basically, uh, styles that people could order from. But let me just find a good example here. The majority of the script cuts in this book there's some like the department here to me this looks like sign writer script a little bit it's very heavily shaded sign writer script but when you compare it to department this department is the same forms as down here uh, ish they're a little more rounded on the top and bottom and the shades to me look more like that of engrosser script most of the examples in this book, like faculty, this is what I would consider Madara's script. Uh, Madara's script is undoubtedly the more popular and more seen of them, also because it's been taught for a lot of years by John DeColibus and other people. Um, and Madara's is so famous that you put his name on anything and it's gonna get popular because he was incredible. Um, but a lot of these script cuts most of the ones in this book, when I look at them, they look like Madara's script to me. Especially like these ones. Super heavy shaded. Um, you can see like that eye, it keeps, it maintains the thickness of its shade until the very end. Whereas Signwriter's script, there are bits in here that to me look Signwriter script-ish, but it's so heavily shaded that it makes me think of Madara's script. So what it boils down to is, like I said in the beginning, Madara's script looks like it hits the shade width and it keeps it longer uh, while maintaining a Spencerian form, whereas Signwriter's script doesn't maintain a thick shade ever. The shade is always tapering in and out, even if very fine. Um, the examples that I'm that I'm using, like I said, are engraved, so they're I guess, perfected by the engraver. Um, and in this instance, they don't ever maintain a th thickness for any given amount of time. The, th the shade is always tapering in from a hairline or out from a hairline. Even if they look like they're staying relatively consistent for a while, they are tapering even if ever so slightly. So that's where the big difference for me. And also, I, and I could be wrong here, but I don't think Madaraz's, like his T's and D's, I don't think they taper all the way from top to bottom. Don't quote me on that, because they might, but I think he does them more like an engrosser script letter. Shaded, I believe. Don't quote me on that, please. It's been a while since I've actually studied Madaraz's exemplars. I looked at them recently, but I didn't really study them or make mental notes. I hope that answers your question, Jenica. <laughs> uh, so going back to what you asked about the C, Martha, the A, the shade is the same as the C, but the angle of the A is different. And here I'll show you what I mean. I apologize if I sound like I'm all over the place today, everybody. Not a structured class. Just Mike letting his brain spit things out as they come. And hanging out with jazz music.
Okay. So with the lowercase a, I'll do a large one with an O. So we'll do one uh, two X sites high here so you can see what I'm talking about. So that would be uh, the sign writer script O. It does start with a hook, um, unlike the Spencerian O that meets at the top. Uh, sign writer script does have a hook. Um, now it's not a, I don't believe anyway that it's a retrace because usually these entry strokes don't go all the way up to the top. I mean, it could technically be written compound curve all the way up Looking over and coming back down. And you get something that looks basically the exact same. But I believe it would be an entry stroke to a lift and then to do that O. Either or work, like I said, they look virtually the same. So it just depends on which you like better and which you get the best results of. That's sort of my mentality about everything, though. Whatever works for you, as long as what gets on the paper looks like what it's supposed to. However you got it there, eh, who cares, really. <laughs> it does look very similar to Madurai script. Everybody tells me, isn't that just Madurai script? Especially when I launched a class of Signwriter Script. I got a lot of, that's just freehand and grocers. That's just Madara Script. And it, I mean, Madara Script wasn't a real thing either. That's just how he liked to write. <laughs> or that was just his style. Um, but to me, they are fundamentally very different. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of examples of the uh, fine Signwriter Script from the book um, in in old work. I don't think it, it wasn't really popular, even though I think it's so gorgeous. Um, but back to the A. If I were to do the A with that same shade, then we run into the same reason why the capital A in Spencerian and Ornamental Penmanship is angled more, or seemingly more, uh, than the other capitals because now I can't go back down without doing a whole bunch of retrace along the uh, 42 degree slant line. So you have to angle that stroke and the A is the only one of the letters, well A, A, D, Q, G, uh, all the letters that use the beginning of a lowercase a. Um, let me make sure that I don't get behind my picture here. So you go over farther to the right. You have to sort of imagine when you come down and you go up where you're sort of going to end up. Where is the where's the left or sorry, where's the rightmost portion of your downstroke shade going to be? That's where you want to start. So then you come across Then you come up, more of a, almost like the connective stroke. I don't believe it's the same as the connective stroke angle. Don't quote me on that. It might actually be. Um, and then, just like doing the uh, lowercase u, lift the pen, drop it, so you have the width of your nib, or the width of your shade. Like I was saying, now I'm right below where I started. That's sort of the, what you imagine, where to start from. Add that shade. Oh, I curved too soon, but that's okay. So that line should technically be, I'm off angle, but you get the idea. This is the main part of that thing. That shade is tipped more so that the these two lines can fit in without retracing. 
Yes, the R in Engrosser's script uh, is very different from the R in Signwriter's script. Signwriter's script just uses a standard uh, Spencerian R. Like in Spencerian, we have our regular R. We're just doing a large version of that R for Signwriter's script. We go up. Slightly less than a quarter above the X height, um, if we're getting super technical, but basically just above the X height. Tiny little bead, not as large of a one as is, as usually is in in Grosser Script. I'm assuming you could do one, but it seems like there wasn't usually a huge bead on the top there. Then you have a compound curve into your downstroke. Whoops. Kept the shade going too long. I forgot to taper out. That's better. I do have bad habit of making my R's be a little too squished. I think they look really nice when they're condensed uh, width-wise, but they don't match the other letters, so I have to be very careful about that when I do it. Like, it worked in Word because it ended up filling that space that would have been between the O and the R, but in a regular series of writing, um, it can look too squished if you're not, or if I'm not careful. Now I can see why my A's are wonky. Yeah! Seeing is believing. It's all about seeing, folks. If you want to be a good penman or a good anything, you train your eye, I pointed in my brain, but that's supposed to be my eye, but there's glasses in the way. You train your eyes because we can't fix the mistakes that we don't see. And unfortunately, when we're learning and when we're starting, we don't see. Learning to see is the biggest thing. That's one of the main focuses. I'm not plugging the class because I'm not teaching the class now anyways, but uh, my signature design class. That's what that's all about. It's all about training the eye, seeing a lot of these forms and getting used to them uh, and how they work with each other. Because that unlocks doors. Seeing is a superpower. Hello, Flourished Hope. We got some new names in the, in the chat today from other weeks. Welcome, new names. I don't know if you're a new name. I don't think I've seen Flourished Hope in here over the previous couple weeks. Love how you have this whole filming setup. So effective and professional. Thank you for this wonderful live session. You are very welcome. I'm glad it looks professional. Uh, it's just what my desk looks like basically all the time. <laughs> uh, I figured it out so that I could do lives. This was my... I had to figure it out. Uh, so I had a good excuse to not do Instagram lives and do YouTube lives instead. I had my reasons for not liking Instagram lives. I wish I could do my in, my YouTube lives uh, like I do them on Instagram, but Instagram doesn't allow it this way. So I can't. Um, but I said I wanted to do YouTube, but if I was gonna do them on YouTube, it had to be right. So I, or I had to look good, so I had to figure out how to make it look good. And finally, it seems like it looks good. It seems like the size of my head is an okay size in the corner of the video. Ashok thought it was too big once upon a time, being a hater. Doesn't like my face. <laughs> That's a lie. I love Ashok. Okay. Is that all the questions? Have I answered all the questions? <laughs> I think so. Unless there's more. Go back to doodling. The ascender strokes are so very bizarre.
Oopsies. I don't remember what a Z looks like. Oops. Close enough. I was going to write bizarre, but I quit. I, uh, why I said oops in there, uh, when I was coming out of the eye, I was going into a standard exit stroke, and then I forgot that I was supposed to be going into a compound curve stroke for the Z, or the Z, for my American friends in here. So there's way too much space in there. Too much. B is so, the B is, is another one. This compound curve is a doozy uh, for me. And there are, there are uh, two ways of doing the ascenders. I personally like to do them uh, like you would in regular Spencerian, as if they're one sort of flowing stroke here. My compound curve got a little wonky there. Um, but they can also be done more so like you would do sort of in engrossers, where you change the angle. You come here. When you hit the X height, you can then go out this way. And if I'm being honest, I think that is probably the better way to do them. Um, they're, it's not the way I do them all the time. Because I want to figure out, I want to be able to do it in one arcing stroke the entire time. Um, but what ends up happening, it's easier to get the shade clear of your entry stroke when you do it the second way than if you go all the way through. Um, but I do believe doing them with a change of angle. One, and you don't really have to lift a pen. You can go from there and keep going, but adding a slight change. I think that you yield sort of the best results. S doesn't have a bead on top like it does, I believe, that in, in Grocer Script when it has a little bead on the top there, it is pointy, but there is a bead on the bottom. That S is a little big for that one, but that's okay. Yeah, you wouldn't shade the um, the descender of the of the Z. Wait, what am I? You don't shade the loop of the Z. Oh, you mean the the descender? No, not like you do the capital letter. But even the capital Z, uh, like when it's written. It can be written with an accent shade. But was a lot of times done just hairline. Like so. That is a pretty decent Z, actually. That is why I want to... I'm trying to get myself used to using the same pen... And you notice we just did my, like, angle change substantially. This is the 
sign writer script angle for my lowercase, change grips, write my capitals, go back, write my lowercase, because the grip has to change, which means the um, paper has to change as well. I always recommend never tweaking your hand, uh, often like stopping yourself periodically throughout your writing session to make sure you're not like twisting up your hand a lot of times as we're writing. Let me see. <laughs> What's the best way to show this? This starts to happen. We'll end up starting to break the wrist as we're trying to write over, but we're getting outside of our zone. Uh, so people will bend the wrist that way that creates strain in here. You want to have your hand always in its relaxed neutral position in whatever grip uh, you use, and then you modify your paper to work with that. Unless, of course, you're specifically trying to train a specific traditional uh, grip or something like that, then that's the time when there are sort of, not rules, but sort of more guidelines that you can follow to make things easier or harder on yourself. Yeah, like that. Not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm stoked about that. That's just fun. Words, any word just looks cool, even when it's decently done in sign writer script to me. And if you want to, uh, if you want to learn more or understand a little bit more about why sort of the choices they made, uh, Fozzie just mentioned she found the exemplars in the um, New Spencerian Compendium. Check out the PDF. Uh, look in the beginning of the book. I don't remember what page it's on exactly, but see if you can find the documentation and read through that. It's about one and a half pages, and the last half page is just sort of. I mean, there's not a whole lot of information in the whole thing. Um, but that's all I've ever seen documented about this script, unfortunately. Or this variation of a script. Heavily shaded Spencerian. I think it's gorgeous, so I might be turning it into something more than it ever was, but that's okay with me. I'm fine with it because it looks awesome and it's beautiful. Yeah, I wish I could do it fast, just so it was more exciting. Because <laughs> it is, finishing it is exciting, but I don't like writing slow. All the time. This is my new favorite. Woohoo! Yay! Making favorites. Okay. What other letter do I have to... My descenders are not very stellar. The descenders are tricky, I think. I find them tricky anyways. They're just the ascenders flipped upside down. They shouldn't really be tricky. But for some reason, 
uh, doing the compound curve that they have is, I find it weird. So for like a J, for example, So the J, as it comes down, my 52 degree slant line, uh, because just like the U and the W and the last or the second shade of the A, the shade is on the left side of the 52 degree slant line side of the shade. So on descenders, when they start with a thick shade, you start with the shade to the left of what is the 52 degree slant line. The right side is much more angled than the 52 degree slant line. And then it comes out as you hit the, the baseline, your shade tapers out. It does a little compound curve out to the right, around. I went a little bit too far to the left here, but, and then you have your nice your regular compound curve exit stroke. <laughs> you don't gotta ask me to teach it again, Martha. Because ever, I mean, if anybody doesn't know now, I will literally teach anything that people want me to teach because I love all of it. I will, I will never, ever, ever, ever get sick of teaching this movement writing, slow Spencerian, signature design, any of the things that I teach, I would love them. My favorites are movement writing and sign writer scripts, so I obviously want to teach those two the most, but I will, I will never get sick of teaching these because the classes are as fun for me as they are for the students. Unfortunately, uh, some of them are they're stressful for the students because unfortunately the things I teach are really hard. I'm sorry. I need to one day teach something easy just to give my students a break. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. One of the, the longest extended letter, fully extended, is the, the F. Let's check it out. The F is crazy because it goes standard two and a quarter. Then it gets, doesn't shade till it starts to cross the baseline, just like the uh, the P, which I guess we haven't really, I haven't talked about the P, but it goes down one and a quarter below. So it's a very long letter. And it is, I... I didn't really realize this before. I didn't really think about it um, until this afternoon. I was looking at this form. And technically, with the compound curve and the shape of the shade, this is the one. And I don't think I'm wrong, but I could be forgetting something. But this is the one time... What's going on, Jewel? Um, that a letter form breaks my rule guideline. Uh, that I teach in my in signature design where a line shouldn't compound more than once. And that means that just means that like we have a compound curve. We don't ever let one line go without changing direction. But the F, if you look, because of the subtle curves in it, it is curved here. I'll do an exaggeration on this side. Then it comes in, then it goes out. Then it goes in. It is the only letter that I can think of and the only style of writing a letter that does that and doesn't look 
wrong. Because 99% of the time, I feel like if anything has more than one compound in it, without changing direction, and what I mean by that is we have a compound, you use the compound curve to change direction. You wouldn't go more than once and change direction. That looks weird to me. That's one too many compounds. But for some reason, this F breaks that guideline, that rule, um, and that's not really, that's not a written rule that I know of. It's just, it just is, um, because lines look weird when they compound too much. But the F gets away with it, and I think that's because it's the shape of the shade on the bottom and not the actual, like, that could be a straight hairline. It's, once it gets to that point, it's straight, and then going up. But the shade weight is what's making it go bubbled. Because uh, that one, unlike the R, it is, I believe, evenly shaded on both sides. That and the variation of the lowercase p that goes like so. That one. I made that too long for Sign Writer's script because of the changed proportions. My apologies. That is more, right? Yes, it goes down three quarters of an X height. My spacing is probably crap, but I love how the shades are just wee little pinches. Yeah! We'll figure out the spacing later. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Just write it. My thought process is if I keep going and keep getting used to what looks good, eventually I'm relying on my brain to dial it in. Because as lo it's once I get good at the forms, then my eye can control what everything sort of looks like. Like how I do things in ornamental penmanship and, and whatnot. I can't do that in shaded scripts yet. They take me a little bit more thought. Because they're slow, I can't just whip it out and let it happen. <laughs> the F is so notorious. It is a bit of a challenge, but I feel like it's worth it just because it looks gorgeous. I love how my name is made up of the... Yeah, Fuzzy, your name is totally the easiest letters to do. Not at all. What am I doing? Come on, brain. Make up your mind. <laughs> Small shade. My arm's like, movement? What are you doing? What is this fast writing all of a sudden?
fuzzy. Gotta be careful. I did a couple little, uh... If you'll notice the exit and connective strokes from the Zeds, they compound twice. Uh, where, like I was just saying, the F, they shouldn't. Um, and the reason for that, I made my O and my Z so close together uh, in the very beginning. Right here, the O and the Z is super close together. So this Z ended up having to be super close to this Z, but there's not enough space in there for an overturn to make it all the way to the second Z. It would have been more space, so I had to squish it with a a double compound line, which is a no-no. Technically, the O and the Z should just be a little bit farther apart so that this over curve can go almost straight up to the second Z. I probably could have done it, but I panicked and I made it uh, double compounding. Is there a Z variation without the extender? Not that I know of. I know there's the that one. I don't even know how to write it because I can't visualize what it's supposed to look like. I know there is uh, the, the Z that some people use in script uh, that doesn't have a descender, but I have never used it. So I Like I said, I don't even know what it should look like. I should learn it um, because I get asked that question a lot with, uh, with the Zs. <laughs> Starts like an R. Trying to imagine. There's, I don't know. I'll put that on my to-do list of things I need to find just because I do get asked that question all the time, even in regular Spencerian and movement writing and stuff. People ask me what other Zeds I can use. I'm pretty sure Fozzie's asked me that question before. Isn't there a Zed I can use without having to put the three descenders next to each other? And uh, I'm sure there is. There is, in fact. I just don't know what it is. I don't use it. Um, but you remind me when you mention R, no, yeah, you you remind me when you said R because it reminded me of the X. The X is interesting. It sort of changes the rules. So, rules, guidelines. Um, so far we know, or we've established that, like in a overturn with a downstroke, Like so, our straight 52 degree slant line line, line line, is on the, um, is on the left side of the shade. So our right one is the curved line that makes up that little oval. For the X, it starts with that same stroke, but for some reason, and again, this is just the example that I saw. This could be that penman messing up. Uh, but the example that I saw has the straight line. Yeah, the angle. I really hope I'm not misremembering this. I'm pretty sure this is how this works. If this is my slant line. it goes down at a sharper angle. So my, um, the right side in this instance is the straight line, which is backwards from what we've learned so far. I made it even more angled than I needed to, but imagine that shade is a little bit bigger, I guess. Maybe like that. And then we finish it with Just a curved stroke. That's not the best example of an X, but... Yeah. 
it ends up being that's too round needs to be sharper down there but yeah the x ends up coming down at a sharper angle for some reason i'm assuming the reason for that is if we do one the regular way and then i bring this here you can see it looks like a mini capital k this line ends up looking too straight versus this really curved line whereas when we bring our first shade farther to the left we get that more of that curve stroke so my 50 degree slant line I brought it a little bit too curvy more like so does that make sense the X is the X is a weird one. So the X is weird, the A is weird, but the A is always weird in Spencerian. Um, and that's it for weird ones, I think, really. Technically. One other thing you could do with the Zs that I'm just realizing, if they were a little bit bigger, you'd have space. If I needed to do two back-to-back, -back, and this really goes for any... Uh, any descender that's followed by a stroke that requires an overturn to get into. So like a Z to an A, a Z to a O, a Z to a... Well, O can come in from an undercurve. I guess most of them... A Y definitely requires an overcurve. Uh, but what you could do, I'll do a large one here so it makes sense. You can cross this, I did a bad example of it, but you cross that above the X height instead of crossing right on the X height. You can see in the example notes here, they all cross with a nice compound curve because the next stroke is just assumed to be an under curve the way I wrote these. But if it has to be an over curve, you would bring this up and you would end up crossing like it's not a set thing but i would assume like halfway through the first quarter <laughs> like right there ish as you come up to get the next stroke so you wouldn't cross right on the uh baseline like you would standard this isn't a very good example of what i was trying to say unfortunately <laughs> gotta have that foresight fuzzy gotta be clever in thinking of your uh of your nicknames here's a fun question have any of you guys gone through your names to figure out uh if you can break down your names like he who must not be named did in harry potter <laughs> i'm only asking because I actually just got into a conversation about this with a friend of mine yesterday or the day before that randomly. I asked her what her Voldemort name would be because he took his full name, Tom Marvolo Riddle, switched the letters around to spell I am Lord Voldemort. Um, which is kind of neat. But... I would just, I mean, it takes a really specific name to be able to spell I am Lord something cool at the end of your name. Um, I was able to uh, with Michael Gordon Ward, and I wrote it down. I'm looking at my notes here real quick, if I can find them. I don't have a lot of cool word options that come after it, though, unfortunately. 
trying to find the best one. I'll share with you guys my best one. Yeah. I am Lord. I can get out of my name, out of Michael Gordon Ward. But then I'm left with these weird, strange combinations. And that was like, Dow Changer? Or Down Charge? I am Lord Down Charge. Does it, I wish it was something cooler than that. Maybe I just have to make up my own word out of all the stuff that's here. But uh, yeah, there's ones like, I can get dance actually. I am Lord Dance, but then there's H-G-O-W-R left over. I am Lord Dance, a goer. There's nothing that makes sense. But uh, it's fun. Take a look at your, at your whole name and see if you can get I am Lord or I am Queen or I am King or I am Sir. I really wish I could probably get I am S Michael Gordon Ward. Nope, I don't have an S. Um, I would love, I wish I could get I am Sir because I prefer Sir to Lord. I am sir, blah, 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 something or other, but down charge, down charge, I don't, <laughs> it's way less cool. The problem is with dance, though, I like that I can get dance, but the leftover letters are just blah, they don't mean any, they don't make any sense at all. So it's like, well, nor does down charge, I guess, really. One day I have to get super creative and make up some cool thing out of my name there. <laughs> yeah, if you've never done that before, give it a shot. It's just kind of fun as a random little activity. And it doesn't have to be I am Lord like Voldemort. Like I said, it could be anything. I am Sir or not even I am. It could just be I blah blah blah. It could be we if you're a Gemini or like to talk like you're multiple people, which I often do. I am a Gemini, so that's how I get away with it. I also have one, so magic. Um... I've never done that. Mine would probably be like a keyboard smash of short words. <laughs> yeah, try it. Just write down sort of what's left over after you like basically create something that makes sense that draws attention to yourself. Like Voldemort, use I am Lord. And then see what you come up with. Something fun. I thought I could come up with a really cool pen name, but unfortunately it's just, uh, just a bunch of gibberish. So I think if I get rid of Lord and change that to something else, then maybe I can get creative, but I gotta get my my Scrabble on if I'm gonna do that, I guess, and be clever. Gotta hit the, hit the wit switch. The wit switch. I need to make a shirt that has a, like a light switch on it that says the wit switch. And then when I wanna be clever, you fake turn on the wit switch. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Oh, it'd be cool if somebody could get the word penman in their name. That'd be dope. Or writer. Nope, I don't have a T. <laughs> I can't believe I got excited there for a sec to see if I could do it just because of the R. I was like, or for the because of the W. I have a W. I have an R. I have an I. I have a not a T. I definitely don't have a T. I could be. I could do write <laughs> writer. With a D instead of a T. It could be like street slang. <laughs> Welcome to the late night live. You caught it. You caught us. We're here. <laughs> we're, we're talking about names. I feel like I haven't written anything in a while. Sorry. This is what late night lives are. Um... I originally started doing the casual ones on Instagram where I was just sitting down to do random things and turned my phone on to hang out with some people on Instagram while I was practicing or while I was doing whatever. Um, I don't have the intention of making them. I don't want them to always be a super structured thing. Uh, today, we have had a definite uh, target. We were working on sign writer script and whatnot, but a lot of the times, 
I want them to just be nice and relaxed. Target! Pretty! Spacing. The E is a very challenging letter for me to space because it is a very narrow letter, but you have to travel far to the right in order to get enough loop space. Uh, and if you then go back too far to the left, it looks too round. Yeah, I have issues spacing the lowercase e. <laughs> Thanks for joining in. Have fun at work. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Or on the Discord. If anybody in here is not on the Discord, jump in. The link is in my Instagram bio. Take Discord calls. That's a good idea. I'm not going to do that right now because that is something that I want to test first. Because um, I know Discord video, the quality is not... Uh, I've tried to Discord video a few people and it's not... Not bueno. I don't know if it's my connection. I don't think it's my connection with Discord, though. Um, but audio, potentially, I could do through Discord. Um, I still need to get, get to work testing uh, a second person to join me so I can have a guest on my lives. But I'll be honest, I haven't tested that at all yet. I know the theory behind doing it. I just haven't done it. Uh, so, the E continuous or broken up like in Grocer Script is a good question. I personally do it uh, continuous. There are examples from the uh, New Spencerian Compendium. I gave both options in my notes. Um, I like to do it continued through if I can, um, but it can be broken up. That is another thing uh, in Madara's script. Madara's broke it up in most of his samples that I've seen. He might have kept going for some, but most of the examples I've seen, he he breaks it up. Um, and again, like uh, the form, the more rounded this gets, like it, it keeps very close to the same sort of trajectory. All it's doing is sort of skipping the shade. Uh, it's not going far out to the right like it would in Grocer Script. Otherwise, this top part gets a little too round looking uh, and it loses sort of the wispiness, the flowiness of the letter, which is why I like to go, I like to keep it going straight through. But they do, as you can see, they have two different looks um, where with the entry is here, it looks much lower as it cuts through where this one allows a nice high and then you start again. So similar to the Ascenders, how I said, like, you can keep going, which is what I like to do, 
Or what maybe looks better is when you stop. I don't like the stop and the change direction that much. Um, so I would say because both are in there, personal preference, I can't... I don't know if there was a rule when you use one, when you use the other. I honestly don't know. Um, one case where I always would continue through is going off of like a V or an O or something like that, as an example. This is my first time ever, I think, writing this with white ink on black paper. I like it. I've never done this before. I've always, I've only really ever written it with a guide sheet. I think, if memory serves. What letter was I talking about? E, right. Sorry. Because when you do it that way, you basically get what you're starting in almost the same place as you would start if you came and did it broken into two pieces anyways. So I tried, and I have a silly one. Civic he get penning fun. <laughs> I'm writing that because that's brilliant. Civic, Civic he get penning fun. You need a shirt, my friend. So do we call you Civic? Is that the nickname then, Vincent? Are you now? Do I just now call you Civic from now on? Oh, it's Civic? And then somebody's like, who's Civic? I'm like, you don't know Civic? You know, he get the penning fun. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I want is Java Oinka. <laughs> See, these are awesome. Oh, great. I'll take Civic. I like Civic. I feel like your signature... Look something like this. Whoa. Two seconds. The nib I'm working with today, because I was working slow, it is uh, extremely sharp. Um... It's an older nib, and the paper I'm using is unfortunately not the best, but give me two seconds. I might have messed it up. A little bit. I think it's just getting old. The metal is sleepy. Uh, pro tip, if you use a loop, or if you have a loop, like a standard little one, um, most of us have something metal within our vicinity. If you get a tiny magnet, like no modification is required, but if you put a tiny magnet on your loop, for me, as you guys saw in my studio tour, I have a metal frame around my desk, so my loop just sticks to the frame. It's obviously out of frame right now, so you can't see it. Same with my nib tin. It could stick up here. Oh, wait, is that not... The magnet stayed on the pole. But if you put the magnet there, it could technically stick up there. Or it could stick anywhere. But the metal of this isn't strong enough to hold the magnet. The, uh, the loop is, so it works perfect, because the magnet always stays on the loop. So I can just take it off, look at it, put it back. It's perfect. Alternatively, you could always glue the magnet um, and then it's going to stay on whatever, but I've all been all about magnetizing things lately for quick, easy storage. Like all my little binder clips just stick to a magnet that's attached beside my desk. So convenient. Saves desk space.
All right, did I fix this? Let's see. My hand doesn't want to write ornamental penmanship right now. It's not warmed up. Was it he got the penning fun? He get the penning fun. I'm just going to put that all down in here. Let me give you an exclamation point as well. Civic. He get the penning fun. <laughs> There's probably something way more fun and clever we can do with the lowercase letters. Because that's very tiny. <laughs> Boy. It's so crazy changing my paper, trying to keep it flat for you guys. Unfortunately, doing ornamental penmanship at this angle is challenging. So I'm not gonna bother. I know it shouldn't be one one word but whatever I was just writing letters <laughs> also a uh, signature blah, 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 sign writer script can look good smaller as well like i'm writing it at a full a full line width here uh what i wrote yesterday when i wrote that gratitude thing that i posted in my stories was approximately yay big but you have to be really careful i think it was a little bigger than this but It's really easy for um, your shades to get inconsistent. Uh, writing with white, I don't get quite as good of a hairline writing slowly. Um, if I were to be writing with this same nib, say with walnut or iron gall or something, my lowercase letters would look a lot nicer than they do in white, unfortunately. I could probably fix that with a slightly different uh, ink to water ratio or a different um, a different nib potentially something a little bit newer but it can be done small as well you just have to be careful that your shades don't then get too big because like I said earlier it does look its best when the shades are rather dainty
And I would probably want to pen in or pencil in an X height since maintaining an even X height. Whoa, that was not a very good pen. Uh, it's a little challenging. Wow, way too far away, Mike. Those are supposed to be touching. Pretend they're touching. <laughs> I'm now Seabick. Yep, Vincent, that's just your name from now on. Sorry, that's your penman name. I like that you can get penning. That's fun. I don't think I can get anything, I can get word. Wording? No, nope, there's no, there is a G. I can get wording. This will require some further thought when I'm not live to the internet. <laughs> I gotta get creative and think of some cool stuff. Is Martha still here? Oh, I saw her make a laugh. I'm assuming she's practicing along. Who's practicing along? Let me know. Who's trying or who's just hanging out, sitting back, eating popcorn, watching? Or who's act who's trying to write along? Martha is awesome. <laughs> Why did my hairline die? Ruined it. That's okay. I don't know if James is still here. He popped in for a sec. A healing word dork? O.M. Wait, were you just left over? You just had OM chilling left over? I like <laughs> I like that so far though. A healing word dork. <laughs> My new business. I'm gonna be a healer. I go from town to town and heal people. Cause I'm the healing I'm the the healing dork. 
Oh. I think my microphone just picks up bikes and things really loud for some reason. <laughs> oh, fun. Your husband's going to be a pro at at sign writer's script. He'll have to take class next time I come over there. Watching from under your blanket. Awesome. That's sweet. Oh, the <laughs> so the O M we could it's not a O M it's a healing word dork Om. like so maybe <laughs> oh note to self you need a longer jazz playlist my jazz playlist isn't very long we've heard the same songs over and over again since we started sorry. We could change it up if you guys want some pop music or classical music or those may be my only options. I need to figure out the, the copyright rules. My, my plan for today, I, I saw a, on, a mix on YouTube, three hours of Super Nintendo <laughs> songs, uh, like relaxing songs from Super Nintendo games uh, from the 90s. Uh, and it's three hours worth of them, and I listened to some, and it was awesome. I mean, I like vintage games, so it sounded really cool. And I was, I got it, and I was going to load it up into the program to be the, the looping soundtrack for tonight. But then I realized, I mean, my account's not monetized, so it's not about money. But sometimes YouTube will cut the audio, and this late night live makes absolutely no sense if there's not audio, since... My voice is also on that audio track. So I got to figure out if there's a way that I can do that or how it's allowed or if, yeah, I got to figure out what's up. Because I know they have really strict rules because people are currently streaming Nintendo games. Um, so there's rules about what you can be doing while playing Nintendo songs, but I don't know how those rules apply to older songs uh, like the Super Nintendo and Nintendo songs. So, I've got to look into that a little bit more. I didn't have really the time or the energy to do all that research tonight before this live. So we're just listening to same old jazz music. <laughs> tea time writing. I keep forgetting I have tea and now it's cold. Tale as old as time, Mike drinks his cold tea. Luckily, I like cold tea. Oh, the music from the 90s video games is the best. I prefer uh, old video games to new video games pretty much across the board. I really like the jazz music vibe. I just need to find more saloonish jazz that's royalty free that I can properly use. That's the problem. I know exactly what I would want to be listening to if um if I was allowed to listen to whatever I want, but unfortunately, I am not. Oh, those are way too close together. Um, I know it happens even in uh, Instagram. I know people get dinged if they're listening to the radio or something behind them. Um, I never used to, 
I'm guessing because I talk a lot. So it sort of changes the sound file a little bit. Which is lucky for me. But I'm pretty sure Nintendo only allows it if you're talking about the song. Like if I was breaking down the song or talking about the instruments they used or something like that, then it's okay. But not just to talk, apparently, about anything like penmanship, for example. I don't think they're down with that. Oh, I guess I could have used... Huh. Is there no example of an ending R? Do they not use an ending R? Yeah, they do. Give me two seconds. <laughs> you guys all have your PDFs up, so you'll be able to see it before I do. But I'm certain there's an ending R. I didn't teach an ending R. And I don't know why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They didn't. Interesting. Really? Ooh, there you go, Fozzie. There's another Y with a looped top, which is pretty nice. A visual loop for the Y on your name. But they don't have an ending R. Okay. Oh, they do have a Z. You guys already said that. <laughs> There's a car. You guys already pointed that out. That exists in the uh, in the notes already. I don't like it. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> not today, anyways. Put my foot down. Me and the bad pilot say, "It's descended at Z." Why is there no? Descending or ending R. That's bizarre. I feel like there could be. Maybe. It's weird, I haven't written with a long pen in a long time, and I see the little bowler hat in my peripheral vision um, when I write with a modern grip. When I write with a traditional grip, it's tucked in close enough to my body that it doesn't really show up. But when I write with a modern grip and you write with your fingers, there's a lot more like this type of movement that the hat makes, <laughs> and I'm not used to that. <laughs> it throws me off, it's funny. It's the little things. You could do that, like the engrossers ending R, I would assume is acceptable. I think it looks good. I mean, that's not the best example of one, but I'm certain that's acceptable. I don't know if you'd want to use the, um, I wouldn't use that variation. Like how we have an OP, we just use that. Or we have a standard. Like those are sort of the three R's in ornamental penmanship. Sorry, they're so tiny on the screen. But that last one, I think, works with sign writer's script. Uh, 
a little bit. Mm, it could look a little V-ish. You gotta be careful of that, I guess. <laughs> you see them? Did I show... <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've shown this on my... Uh, on lives already, but I'm gonna show it again. Because it sort of falls along these lines. A carved holder that I made recently for a friend of mine. It's very, very shiny. But it's, um, you see there, it's Mickey Mouse. I think I've shown it already. Mickey Mouse. But it's not, he's not looking like straight up <laughs> and his eyeballs Basically, I did it so when you use a modern grip, because the person this is for uh, uses a modern grip, Mickey is looking like, eh? <laughs> like, right at. So when I write like this, Mickey's looking right at me. Like his head is sort of tilted, it's cocked slightly to the side and up in that direction. And his eyes, his pupils are looking up there right at me. It was an intentional choice. And it actually made it way harder to carve the little, like, like I carve it regular or carve it like uh, uh, slightly tipped and slightly turned. <laughs> made it way more challenging because I had to, basically I ignored the holder and I carved the whole thing. I held it at an angle and then carved regular. Because um, switching that like slight little adjustment in my brain was really difficult. But yeah, he's looking like, eh? <laughs> staring. So, I didn't really realize how maybe weird that would be. Uh, luckily, it's not as long of a holder. But, um, yeah, he's just staring at you. So you can just have a conversation. If you're lonely, if it's COVID and you're quarantined, you're never alone. You got Mickey at your desk chatting with you while you're writing. <laughs> I get, I mean... I've been writing with this little tiny broken pen for so many years now. Um, well, so many years. Maybe not so many years. It's been at least a year. It's been over a year that I've been writing with my little stub broken pen uh, as my sort of daily writer when I have so many pens. But yeah, that's my little... Uh, that's Mickey. Sorry that he, it's really hard to get a good shot because I can't... I can't zoom in close enough for you, but... There he is, and you can kind of see the, the, how it's cocked to the side. And he's looking up, trying to put him in the position where his pupils are really hard to see when he's shiny in the camera. Oh, what if I do? No, that won't work. Never mind. There, my little Mickey holder who, eh? That's a nice shade there, buddy. That's what he's saying. I can't do a Mickey impersonation, or I would, I would talk like Mickey and congratulate my writing. But I can't talk like Minnie or Mickey. <laughs> the next thing I'm gonna carve, I'm giving my shoulder a break from carving at the moment, but I wanna carve a Mickey Mouse holding a, like a bucket. And then the bucket's gonna be, I think an inkwell, like an ink jar holder. I don't know if that's possible yet, but that's a plan. I should use, I haven't set up the octopus flange to be used all that much. Maybe I'll do that this week so I can write with it more. Start writing with the Kraken. <laughs> Martha, it's for Esther. It's hers. I don't know that she knows it's finished. I just kind of carved it and put away and haven't told her yet. Don't tell her. I may have sent it to her. I'm not sure. She knows I started it. I just don't know if she, if she knows I finished it. All this COVID stuff happened. And I want to finish. I want to carve more inkwells so bad. Uh, the first one, I want to carve an inkwell and a pen. 
with an Easter Island head. I want to have an East, like a, a desk ornament that's an Easter Island head, but it's also a, an ink jar holder. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, Esther wants anything and everything, Mickey. I gotta be careful, though, because if I make her this, then she's gonna want a whole set. I'm gonna have to make a goofy one, a mini one, make a whole set. <laughs> Would you write the T and H combination? Yeah, this is Martha's way of being like, Yo, Mike, back to work. Stop talking about Mickey Mouse. Get to work. Crack the whip. Yes, Vincent, Sorcerer's Apprentice. That's exactly right. The original idea in my brain was just like a, a barrel, like a Donkey Kong type of barrel that Mario would have just because that shape, but it makes way more sense. Um, unfortunately, I gotta go, I gotta watch the movie and see if there's like a screen capture of him holding one like this. I don't know if there is. Normally he's holding them at the sides. Um, but I think I want him like off balance, sort of just carrying it. But I'm, I'm gonna make it a bucket like the Sorcerer's Apprentice. But I don't think it's gonna be Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey. I think it's just gonna be a standard Mickey holding a Sorcerer's Apprentice bucket. So it's like ode to Sorcerer's Apprentice, but it's still just regular old Mickey. Regular old Mickey, that sounds like he's boring. Mickey's not boring. Regular old Mickey is just exciting, cool Mickey. T and H combination. Yes. <laughs> Are you writing your name? And did you get as far as M A R? And now you want. Now we gotta figure out the rest. By any chance? <laughs> so the T, we come up not quite two. It's like. One and a half and a little bit ish. It's not an exact science. Now this is one of those instances where you decide if you want to do the H continuing all the way or if you want to do it up and then cut and over and around. Um, I could do it both ways here and we'll see. Go. And that one actually, that was like a really good scenario where it, like the shade is happening in a really good spot. It doesn't cut through the, the, the stem stroke too much. Um, spacing between the T and H. Uh, anytime there's these long strokes, that's why I have trouble spacing like the S's, uh, the long strokes. I have issue spacing, just visualizing where that down stroke is going to happen takes some figuring out. <laughs> that shade happened a little abruptly there, and this is crazy Wonk City. That's not a very good H. The distance, I think, well, you can see here, my line is very much straight that direction and then straight that direction. I'm on two different slant lines, unfortunately. What's going on, Monica? <laughs> Ooh, Martha, you're famous. If we were in the Discord right now, me six would be like, Martha, you just upgraded to famous. Or I would say, ooh, Martha, you just upgraded to level blah, blah, blah. Hashtag fancy. Bowler hat emoji. <laughs> if, you, if anybody's not on the Discord, that makes no sense. But if you are on the Discord, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The 
fancy hat. It's all about the, <laughs> the fancy hat. Today, I do not have the fancy hat. What am I doing right now? That's not even a letter. And also I put... <laughs> so this is why. This is a good example. Unfortunately, it's far away. So you can't see super. But I put my shade on the wrong side of the 52 degree slant line on this H. This, this, the right side or the left side is on the 52 degree slant line and the right side is not. You can see how this whole thing... This hairline still follows the right shape, but this whole H ends up having this... It's an exaggeration, but that type of a look, which is why it's important. The T, the shade... Wait a minute, don't say the wrong thing, Mike. Figure it out before you talk. I get this backwards all the time. This is like indirect and direct loops. The T, the shade is on the right hand side. Wait, what? No, I didn't do that wrong. What did I do wrong? Why does that look so awkward? I guess I just brought that line in the wrong shape. Because basically, let me do a large example. The T shade. Should be like so with my 52 degree slant line right there. So the shade should be. Right? Am I backwards now? Come on, brain, figure it out. Stop confusing yourself. Yeah, that's right. And then if I do the opposite, like the H, the 52 degrees slant line, the shade is on the opposite side. I really hope I, sorry that I made that confusing. T&H is mental. <laughs> it is. They always go together, though, so. <laughs> yes, I know, Fuzzy, you're a fan of the bot. The bot is fun. I need to give the bot, like, more things. Maybe every week I'll give it, like, a trigger word. I wonder if that's possible. If I can give it a command where if somebody says, like, a word... The bot just like celebrates or like you've said the word of the day or something like that I don't even know if that's possible that might require some actual coding and <laughs> that might not just be built in I'm certain I could figure it out though but I gotta think of fun things for the bot to do because the bot is kind of fun I could also make other bots or uh, bring other bots in there but I like our little Mesix who chats to people the Discord's been slow. Not a lot of action going on there lately, which is fine. It doesn't need to have action all the time. So the key, what ended up happening wrong with this H, too late I hit that, that line. You'll notice I came down here. I didn't have time for this line to go back and compound curve into the straight line. So then it gets that arc shape. H... I think H is just hard. I don't think it's TH. I think the T is this T is relatively simple. It's just you put the shade on the right side and you're golden. H is it's just the ascender stroke that's that's a wee bit challenging. You did this for your certificate though. You should have this all figured out by now. Right?
How cool would it be if one day there was a certificate for Sandwriter script? The whole thing. That would be dope. I don't think it'll ever happen, but it'd be super cool. So the H shade should be on the left. Now I have to be careful because this is one of those things where I say the wrong thing and then I'll get in trouble later. For the H, the H would be this instance because it's a down, uh, it ends on a, the down, uh, the, sh the words, the shade is on the, the baseline. So the shade would be on the right side of the 52 degree slant line. And it feels really weird doing it that way. Keep writing it wrong. Why does that feel so strange today? No. There it is. So this is my 52 degree slant line. The left side of the shade comes up and cuts through part of the loop. Our other line is much more vertical. So you move the right tine out <laughs> Is that what you've been waiting for, James? For me to try that D? <laughs> I do want to try it. Maybe I'll try that right now. I'll take a break from Sign Rider's script. For two seconds. And try. I don't know if I can do it with this pen. This pen isn't perfectly lined up. And I'm sorry, I have to do it with the paper at a crazy angle for you guys unfortunately I can't do it at my standard angle I guess I could turn my body a little bit so it's not quite as crazy for you this feels crazy now but I want to try I don't even this D is difficult for me primarily because I don't do this variation of the D period I never use the the D that starts with a compound curve how does it go I don't remember let me Something like that, right? And then he goes from here, and then writes deer, where he went. Like that? I should look at his post and actually see what it is. I think I'll need to use a different nib for this one. Let's see, let's see.
No, that's not the one. There it is. Yeah, that's a challenge. I should be using better paper, but I am going to use a better or a, a newer nib for this one. Because this nib is super scratchy. Scratchy. Our nibs don't die, they just get scratchy. It's almost done. Oh! <laughs> I didn't even realize. Oh, we're going to see. Maybe. I'm not going to say it, just in case. In the next two minutes, I might decide to cut it off. Maybe. <laughs> Perhaps. I make no promises, you guys. You never know what could happen. This D might kill my, uh... <laughs> my self-confidence. Yeah, I can't do it at that angle. Sorry. I know it makes really crummy video experience for you guys and unfortunately i can't like take this now and show it on instagram because it's super crooked but i don't want to change my camera angle because that just takes too long and i want to go back to sign writers in a little bit unless you guys vote if you guys want to be done with sign writers i can change my camera and we can just do some op for the night but i feel like i want to do a little more sign writers <laughs> Where did he go there? Oh, that last shade is so tiny. Or so quick. Mm-mm. My hand is not in ornamental penmanship mode whatsoever. Why did you do this to me, James? See, James is going to be the reason that my vibe gets killed and we finish before midnight. Everybody blame James. Blame him by going on Instagram. Go at him ask and follow him. And that's how you can blame him for what he's caused this evening. <laughs> I might have to do this with whole arm without my forearm on the ground. I feel so not limber. From riding slow for the past hours. Ow, my shoulder hurts. Okay. Not because of riding, but just because of my issues. <laughs> Stupid shoulder. Okay. I don't know if I'll be able to do this tonight. Being honest. thing there and he went over like this it's not nearly as good as his but that's the idea let me get a new sheet of paper here it's hot in this room right now, too. A little... I need to open the window, but I can't reach it without using a step letter and my piano's in the way. Currently. I wonder, we'll see what Blue Ghost looks like doing sign writers. If it's no good, I'll change the camera and we'll do some OP. That is, if we last... 
three more minutes. <laughs> That is not a very nice D. That's the idea of it. My ovals are not very refined today. And I, I keep aligning my camera to be straight. Or my paper to be straight because I'm looking up there. That's what I was using as a gauge last week. But I can't do that. Mm -mm. That one. That second shade worked okay. Having trouble with the first stem shade today for some reason. I don't think I've ever actually used uh, even just like the compound curve into this variation of the D uh, in movement writing ever. This is a completely foreign movement to me, unfortunately. It's my own fault. Blech. I need to use my forearm, but it's sticky. And I don't know if it's stretchy enough. Oh, there it is. We gotta do it. I didn't make up the rules. Okay, Google. Turn off desk. Okay, Google, turn off studio. Okay, turning off studio lights. <laughs> That's so ridiculously fun. I actually had an idea, though, um, what I'm going to do. Okay, Google, turn on studio. Sure. I'm going to turn these. I want to see if I can do, like, I want my face to be a little visible. How did I do this last time? I, not last time, I set up like a test video. I wanted to see, was it this way over here? Maybe it was that. So it doesn't affect the writing surface, but it looks like I'm telling stories. Ghost stories. But you guys can at least see my face a little bit more instead of solid black. Okay, if we're gonna do that, we also we can't have this saloony jazz music. I didn't put together a proper late night live glow party playlist, but at least something with a little more pep to it, I think, is called for. Turn that down a little bit so it's nice and glowy. There we go. Just so you can at least see my face a little bit. Last time it was too dark. We'll see if the writing Oh, and I can't be writing on white paper anymore. Everything has to change. Oh. Put away the white ink. Oh, let me get a guide sheet. Or uh, not a guide sheet, a regular writing piece of paper from the stack under my desk. These don't have printed guidelines. Whoopsies. I should have printed some of these with guidelines before we started. Oh. Late night live. Oh, this is too bright, huh? Do you guys prefer my face in darkness, but the writing looks better. My screen is too bright. Oh, 
also, wait a minute. I gotta bring the glow light closer. There we go. There, how's that? That look good? <laughs> it's hilarious that this this was literally just the top sheet of paper in my uh, in my practice paper stack. Um, I didn't really realize that it was already written on from last time because you can't see it in the daytime. <laughs> Monica, welcome to the glow party. I do want to see if I can get it. Oh no. That ruins it too much. I need like a little face light. Somehow. But that's a little too bright. I'll try to figure this out for next week. Because I would like my face to be a little more visible. What if we turn down this? That's okay, that's still... I gotta modify my setup a little bit here for next time. My apologies. But this is not super refined. I'll try to get it so at midnight I can just like swing the light down and we can begin. But my setup, I was recording some tap dance videos the other day. And in doing that, my setup gets taken all down, obviously. Um, and when the setup gets taken down, I gotta rebuild it. And it gets rebuilt slightly different every time. There we go. The light's nice and close to the writing. That'll work. We have a little bit of face light. <laughs> this is silly. Now I feel ridiculous because I'm still doing sign writers, I guess. A, a, a part of me feels like I want to do OP right now, but that requires me to reset up my camera angle and everything. You guys can let me know if you want me to do that or not, or to stick with sign writers. I'll leave it up to you. Oh, I wish the... I need my black, I need a black light on the glow pylon in the back. I gotta create a whole party. <laughs> Thanks, Monica. I'm glad you, uh, you like it. Light up glasses. That's such a good idea, James. Yeah, dance along. I gotta, like... Sorry that this transition's not great. Sign writers for more glowy. All right, we're gonna do sign writers. Um, yeah, we'll have glowier with the shades. I'm gonna turn this off for now. My face is invisible, but the writing looks a lot better this way. I think. Yep, sweet. Sign writers. Here we go. Where's my bottle of ink? Finding ink in the dark. It should be glowing, but it's far away from the black light. There it is. Glowing ink. Oh, it doesn't glow nearly. In real life, it's like the whole bottle's glowing green right now. But unfortunately, you guys can't see that. What if can I change this setting? There we go. I can make my face cam a little brighter so you guys can at least see the pylon. Now, if I had white glasses, you'd be able to see those. That'd be cool. 
and you can see that. Ooh, party in my house. <laughs> uh, just ridiculous. It's funny though, after we do these, after I do glow writing, <laughs> Like when I write tomorrow, I always forget what paper towel. I don't realize my paper towels have um, stuff on them or they're all uh, dirty from, from the glow ink. <laughs> so then I end up uh, smearing glow ink on all of my regular practice writing. I should get a glow in the dark bad pylon shirt. What I want to do though, I need to get like a glow in the dark. I need to get a bad pylon shirt that changes when the black light turns on. Like it's a regular respectable bad pylon and then midnight hits, the black light comes on, the lights go off and then like it different parts glow. So it's like party bad pylon all of a sudden. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my mom has entered the chat. <laughs> um, what up, mom? Welcome to the black light writing party. <laughs> this is uh, not a very good guide sheet to use for um, for sign writer script, by the way. Unless I'm doing really, really big sign writer script, and that's not really my intention today. It's also the wrong angle. It's set up for my ornamental penmanship angle, so it's really tripping up my brain right now. How's the video? Is the glowiness good enough for you guys? I guess I could write closer up here so you can see it a little bit better. There's a mosquito flying around. This was supposed to say glow light, but I had glow in my brain, so I wrote glow low, which I guess works. That could be, that's our slogan now. Glow light, glow low. <laughs> I love that Monica's, I love that you're liking our session so much, Monica. This is what happens if the live, it starts at 9 p.m. And if we make it past three hours, then that means we hit midnight. And the first time I did it, it was just for fun. But then I made the rule that any time a live is sort of fun enough and I lose track of time and we hit midnight, because normally I wouldn't go live that long. But if we hit midnight, I said, it's any time the live goes to midnight, no matter what we're doing, it turns into a glow party. So my glow light is set up with Google and it automatically turns on at midnight. Uh, everything else isn't quite so automatic yet, but I'm gonna set it up. So at midnight, ideally everything just like automatically hits this configuration. That'll be the goal for, for next week. And then the incentive is 
for you guys to keep people in here and keep the chat exciting enough and I guess to make me lose track of time so that we hit midnight uh, every week. <laughs> I don't necessarily want to hit midnight every week because it uh, makes for pretty long nights. Glow low. <laughs> Swing low, nope. Glow low, sweet chariot. Glow low, sweet chariot. Um. <laughs> Sorry, I've been ignoring chat. Uh, yes, DC four thirty. Uh, Signwriter script is essentially just large Spencerian with shade, but the proportions are very different to regular Spencerian. Um, in like the the relationship between the x height and the ascenders and descenders and the width between letters, all the proportions and spacing and everything change completely um, for sign writers. But essentially, it is heavy shaded Spencerian modified to look better um, for headings and signs and and things like that. Glow low, baby. <laughs> Hashtag glow low. Oh, I forgot about our hashtag from last week. Hashtag ASMRMG Ward. That's ASMRMG Ward. I'm not going to do ASMR this week. We'll save that for another week. I got to remember all our late night live hashtags that we create. This should be a workshop. <laughs> Blacklight workshop. That would actually be really fun. Oh, yo, once travel's open again, maybe this is the thing. Maybe this will be like a new class at Iampeth next year. The late night glow, join Mike's late night, like a three hour glow session. Why would it be weird? I will say, um, it, there was no glow lighting, but when I was in Poland last winter, um, all the calligraphers, we went to like a essentially like a study room that we do at Iampeth, but they set up, there was individual tables, similar to Iampeth, but there was not, they're not long tables. Every person had their own table and every table had its own lamp and the room lights were shut off. So the only lights in the room were just like spotlights on each table. So it was neat. Uh, we, we had like wine and you could, you walk around, but you socialize by walking to someone else's table. So it's not, it was such an interesting vibe because it was dark, but you go and you can like, some people were heavy working on pieces. Other people were just kind of drinking wine and hanging out, which is what I was basically doing. Um, Cause I had taught all day. So I wasn't in a super writing mood at the time, but it was a neat vibe. And it was, it to me felt similar to what a black light vibe would be. Um, it was a little bit brighter than a black light vibe, but it was fun. <laughs> I'm gonna think, yeah, one night, maybe we'll do it, Iampeth, next year, I'll bring it up with, uh... <laughs> I'll bring it up with Neil, and see if he'll let me do a one night, black light, glow, Iampeth after dark. <laughs> Breakfast and snacks. <laughs> Carry on glow bugs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Have a good, have a splendid evening. Uh, for the record, my mom's not in the same time zone as me. It is 1.20 in the morning for her right now. And I guarantee she just finished, my mom's uh, actually really good at coloring. She's She does coloring books and really, really dope shading and whatnot. And I guarantee she just finished working on some fancy Zentangle or something. And now she's finally going to bed. My mom is a is a night owl like me. Though she, I don't feel like she was nearly as much when I was a kid.
<laughs> it's a talking pylon. That's the pylon teaches the lesson. <laughs> Go to bed, mom. I'm not supposed to talk about you when you're here. <laughs> Sorry, I just keep reading Glow Low and it makes me laugh. I don't know what to write next. <laughs> uh, too fun. I forgot the T or the P. Darn it. Uh, that's my big issue with writing slow things. I forget what I'm doing. When I write fast, I don't forget how to spell things. When I'm writing slow, apparently I forget how to spell things. Oops, put the shade on the wrong side of the line there. Oh, this is no longer writing. This is I'm drawing letter forms now. Uh, sign writer script is not a not really a written letter form. Um, it can be. You can go a little bit quicker, but it it is a drawn letter form, much more like in grosser script. Or not letter form, lettering style. Whoopsies. I feel like my X height's all over the place right now. Whoops, don't forget to add a shade. <laughs> I 
I'm going to see if I can find... I want a different guide sheet. <laughs> I need autocorrect in my head. I do. The thing is, I know how things work in my head. It's when I start to write them. It's happened since I was a kid. Um, I've told this story before, but once when I was doing a poster um, in grade 9 or 10, group project, <laughs> I was that kid who everybody else did the research and, and did the project, and all my job was just to make the poster look awesome. Because everybody knew I was sort of the... I was the artistic friend, um, and the whole thing, it looked dope when it was finished, but it said, rheumatoid arthritis. It didn't say arthritis. It was a super mess up on my part. Let me see. Oh, it's hard finding things in the dark. Oh, that'll work. Sweet. Luckily, at any given time, I have guide sheets literally everywhere around my desk <laughs> of many different shapes, sizes, and what is this guide sheet's like A4? Why do I have A4 guide sheet? I don't have A4 paper. Weird. It's not A4 though. What is it? It's like weird when companies do their own special size oh yeah i got tons of guide sheets because well, i print them i print guide sheets for like every specific thing i'm sort of working on um just because i have the templates all set up on my computer so i end up printing new ones or if i'm writing like this one i think was for some correspondence i was doing on some very specific paper which is why i was using this guide sheet um i guess Dude, Sidewriter's script looks dope in the black light. <laughs> I need to get a, a black. Wait. I hate that this is only our second glow party, so I'm just sort of still ironing out my ridiculous details. But if I get a black sheet of paper instead of a white one from my hand, it maybe won't take away from the letters quite so much. Maybe. No, I know I, I have like printed guides and stuff from teaching overseas that are A4, but this is, I think this is just some weird paper that's not quite A4. Oh, that's not a straight line. Oh well. joys of working in almost pitch black. <laughs> this is funny. I'm also going to need some like, I need some like glow light holders. I wonder, does acrylic glow in the glow light? What does that look like? That looks kind of cool in the glow light. Okay, I'll keep that in mind for future. I don't think I want to write with that pen every week though because it's crazy long and it scares me. There we go.
Now the letters can shine a little bit more. The key, I need to find, I need an ink maker. I gotta contact like Fox and Quills or Posaka or somebody and see if somebody can make me like a white ink that is black light uh, responsive. Cause I don't, I mean, Blue Ghost is awesome because when I turn the lights on, it's invisible. But for black, for like late night lives, I just need it to be super glowy. So I need to find, like I just need glow in the dark ink, basically. Black light ink, which doesn't need to be clear for the purposes of these videos. Cause then I would love to write with black light ink on black paper. That'd be sick. I keep forgetting to look at the chat. Well, no, like I could write on black paper. I could write on the same black paper that we were using, but I'll show you what happens. The white ink that I have does glow a little bit, but see, not nearly as much. It's not glowy enough. Like it has, if it's right under the light, it shows up but it's just not bright enough. Um, it's white, but it's not quite good enough. And I can totally see the lines. So all I need is an ink that is more a, a black light ink or a glow in the dark ink, or if there's something I can add to bleed proof white to make it um, black light uh, sensitive or glow more. Cause the ink on my paper is super white. It's just not glowy. It's not the kind of white it glows in a black light, unfortunately. And also, there it is. <laughs> this was sitting right beside me and I lost it because it is really dark. But if I'm right under the black light, I can see guidelines and stuff. Does mixing blue ghost and pigmented ink stop the glow? I honestly don't know. Um, I don't want to have to buy another bottle of Blue Ghost, so I've never, I don't want to mix my Blue Ghost with anything. Um, I do use it a, a fair bit for actual black light, like invisible ink letters, and, and I like to draw stick men on correspondence and stuff, or on just random things. I keep a fountain pen full of it that I can just write random stuff with. Um, like graffiti but it's tiny little things with a fountain pen um but i don't know it might i mean i know there's lots of pigments and powders and stuff like that because there is glow in the dark inks i just have to look into it and see what i can find it works really good for black paper because this would just look so much better if the paper was fully black instead of currently i use uh, ivory paper White paper doesn't work because it glows as much as the letters. I 
And unfortunately, like you can see here, if I do a stroke right on the black with the blue ghost, oh, wait, I totally did that off, off camera, sorry. It glows kind of okay, but blue ghost is really liquidy and it soaks into the paper and then it disappears pretty quick. So that doesn't work. But I'm certain there's some kind of thing. I mean, honestly, even like gum Arabic or something might add it to blue ghost. But I feel like it's better to add something to white to make it glowy. If you guys, anybody wants to help figure that out, by all means. Late Night Live Force, assemble! You guys are now my, my crew. LNL crew. What what? <laughs> you do the research and I'll make it look good. Sounds good to me. I like the way you think, Civic. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like my letter forms are going out the window, but I'm having fun. <laughs> Do -do -do -do. Oh, this pen, the white stripes on this pen don't glow either. Bah, I need a black light pen. The clear one will look cool. But I need a black light pen. Do, would any of my pens glow? I'm trying to think. I don't really have any acrylic pens that have anything glowy in them. Nothing I have is glowy. My desk is non-glowy.
try this word. F J is that just an O with a line through it? R N. Fjorn. F J. How do you do? You just do a regular O with a line through it. How do I do the line? Sorry, my computer is far away and I have the screen turned super dim so that it doesn't affect the black light too much. I don't like the line is the same as the... Because uh, the line messes up the slant line of crossing something diagonally when it's already diagonal. Is weird. Like I want to cross it on the 52, but then it's just gonna look like a line, a vertical line straight through it. Compound curve, that's smart. Just like that? Bjorn. That's how I would write that one. For now. Upon further investigation there might be a better way to write that and then yeah I'm not even gonna try to do those OEs and EAs but Oster that's just a regular O with a line through it obviously not warmed up for ornamental penmanship Yeah, yuck. That's gross. Yeah, good enough. Oh, where I would do the line through it. <laughs> Not like that, probably. Paper's moving. Not good. I would cross the O different, probably, but. I have to put this paper somewhere so I don't forget it. Otherwise, these end up just kind of in and amongst my other practice pages. And unfortunately, paper that was used for blacklight ink uh, reacts really weird. So every once in a while, I'll just grab a sheet of paper and write with it with like walnut or iron gall or something. And it's, the ink goes super like, it bleeds a lot when it hits those lines. And it always throws me for a loop until I realize, oh, this was totally this is a blacklight sheet of paper. This has writing all over it. 
from <laughs> Late Night Live. Which has happened a little bit. Not just from Late Night Live, but from me scribbling with black light ink in general. Darn it. Weird. The blue ghost doesn't usually railroad like that. I like this song. Oh! That's why I edited to this song just like the other day. I edited a video for Instagram to this song. Wait, what? Oh, that's what I'm doing wrong. I'm making my D way huge. Ah, oh, whoops. Amateur mistake. This should go like Right? I don't do this D. I'm not used to the way it looks That word that's the backwards a and an E combined, right? I did this when I was in Poland last summer It sounds like I'm lying. I was in Poland twice last year. Once in the summer, once in the winter. <laughs> Let me try. How do you do it? A and a, a reverse E. I know I've seen it done before. I'm not even gonna try. I don't know. Jeez, I gotta I feel like I'm teaching myself how to do letter forms right now. I'm not used to doing forms. I'm not used to, but it's my own fault for not learning how to do this variation of the D. Blah. Assuming it's because I do so little engrosser script, and this is the standard shape of an engrosser, well, closer to anyways, than the Spencerian D I normally use. I did it again! I'm so used to making the D super round. I don't hate it. Hate is a strong word. I think it's very it's very pretty. Um I just never use it. It's one that I've it's just never been for some reason I don't think it's been in any of my handouts or notes or anything. I've just never used it. For no good reason. Cause I don't dislike it. Find it pretty. Wow! Nip snaps look dope <laughs> in black light. I think I discovered that last time we did this. <laughs> oh. Nib snaps are so cool in black light and in slow motion. Unfortunately, it's hard to do them on purpose. I want to get some good nib snap like slow motion footage, but it's cringe worthy to do them and try to get them on purpose. Luckily, when I use this paper, they're pretty much inevitable. It's they're always going to happen because this paper is super scratchy. It's not very good writing paper, but it looks really good under the black light, so I use it. Hopefully I didn't ruin this nib. If I snap again, we will know that I did. 
I'm too lazy to look at it first. No! Come up, Mike! Come up! <laughs> yeah, like that. That's what we want. Oh, that was a potential nib snap. Hmm. I need to look under the loop really quick, <laughs> really close to the black light. Darn it. I don't want to turn the regular lights on because it'll hurt my eyes, but I can't really see. fails what where did my magnet go when all else fails make your hand lighter I guess this will be a lot easier with the forearm movement but I feel like I'll mess up I don't have enough movement in my arm to do it this big. I have to do it smaller. Bruh. I need to go forearm. I'm going to try this a couple more times, then I'm going to go back to sign writers. can't do this D. This is going to take some off-camera practice from me. So I'm looking, this is, this is poor at the moment. Idea, but I gotta get better. <laughs> it's highly unrefined. Did it again. Stop doing that. Habits die hard. For the record, I'm going by this. I'm going about this all wrong. This should be drills that I do with the lights on <laughs> to train my muscles for this specific stroke. Um, Diving right in to the deep end like this is not, uh, I wouldn't consider it advisable. There's a reason I'm failing right now, essentially. No! Up! Up! Why is that so weird? It goes against everything my brain wants to do.
It's in there. It wants to come out. It's in the arm. It's getting closer. I think I'm going to try one more time and then we'll call it quits for this one for now. Probably should be using my old pen too. That's fully shut up nice. Not that I'm making excuses. I should be able to do it regardless. Forgot to shade. Yep, calling it quits for that one. <laughs> I'm going to stop doing it the wrong way. And I will do it the right way. At a later time. <laughs> if you guys want to see, if you haven't seen um, O.P. Henry's uh, version of that, that I saw originally, check him out. Uh, O.P. Henry with dots in between on Instagram. He does beautiful work, uh, extremely close to traditional style, um, to the old masters. He's an extremely accomplished penman, and uh, yeah, he did that one today, and I think it's gorgeous, so I want to learn it, but I'm going to learn it the right way. I'm going to stop meshing around. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> I posted it on Instagram uh, that I was going to try it tonight um, earlier. That's why James reminded me to do it. Um, and I'm glad I did. I just should probably do it uh, a little more cautious, consciously and give it a wicked shot because that was... I fail. Oh, that's what I'll do. What day of the week is it? It's Tuesday. I will get that, or I will work on that signature. I don't guarantee. I don't guarantee that I will get it, but I'll work on it. Not signature, but that word. And I will ideally do it for Super Slow Thursdays, because I haven't posted one of those in a couple weeks.
Amazing Network. I got so excited I was running out of space. I just look like an idiot today because I can't spell. It's, ladies and gentlemen, it's one in the morn. Good. Shoot. <laughs> My brain is dying, apparently. Wow. One in, I got, I was running out of space and I think my brain said, you're running out of space. You should just finish this letter. Jeepers. <laughs> right after, the, right before the G. Give it a little. <laughs> One in the morning. Right there. No, at least it's more. That's true. The worst one of those that I ever did. Um, I was hanging out and doing some writing at a coffee shop, and I met uh, some random people. There was a there was it was a guitar player, a musician, and his wife were sitting next to me, and we just got randomly started chatting. I think they commented on my writing or something, and we got we got chatting, and they asked me to write my name in their book. So I said okay. Um, so I, my I was writing Michael Ward, and I got. So, um, into talking, like I, I read my name, or I said my name out loud, and then I wrote M-I-C-H, and my brain was thinking about the exit flourish that I was going to do, because I was, I was going slow, so I was doing very loopy, ornate type of on-the-spot signature, um, nice and slow, but I would M-I-C-H-A-R-D. W A R D and I didn't realize until I finished did I realize I honestly can't remember now but yeah at the end that's what the piece of paper said my card ward M I C H A R D W A R D like an idiot <laughs> and I don't think I noticed until I finished W A R D and looked at it and was like oh that is not my name cool right on well done, Mike. <laughs> my card is my alter ego. I can spell it with my, uh, with my Voldemort spelling. <laughs> it's an Indian specialty. Nice. Ridiculous. Uh, but on that note, ladies and gentlemen, it is one o'clock in the morning. Um, so I should probably end this. Now, really quick, I want to ask, because I want to know this for future reference too. Um, when I end live sessions that have made it past midnight, do I turn the lights on before I end or do I finish it like this? What do you guys think? What is your opinion on the matter? I know last time I turned the lights on, and I mean, I like the idea of turning the lights on because I can see and, and talk into the camera and say goodbye and thank you and all that kind of stuff, but Vincent says finish it in the dark. 
all right <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen well that i guess i could do this ladies and gentlemen that oh that makes my teeth look weird oh this hot um <laughs> sorry focus one in the morning glowing see this is what it looks like to me this is it's that bright on my desk like everything on my desk, my paper and everything is glowing a lot brighter than it looks in the camera. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our late night live. What is this? Late night live number seven. Uh, thank you very much for hanging out with me today. Uh, today was fun. I really feel like I completely lost track of time. I was not expecting to hit midnight when we hit midnight. Um, this was fun. I want to do more um, sign writer script on lives and in general. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed your introduction or revisit to uh, sign writer script. And um, yeah, that's it. If you guys have any ideas for the late night lives, not so much topics. I mean, you can send me topics, but ideas on things that would make the flow better or the chat more exciting or things like that. Please let me know. Send me a, a DM on Instagram or once this video is posted, put it in the comments below. Um, especially if you have ideas for like the after midnight stuff. I know we had we talked about some fun things today that I want to try to incorporate into the next one if I can work it out or right, get it all done. But uh, yeah. This has been awesome. Um, Discord, if you guys are not on the Discord, if you're not a part of the MRMG Ward study hall, please join in. When you're there, please don't uh, wait for conversations to be started. Chat, chat about absolutely anything. Uh, if you tried sign, uh, sign writer script tonight, post it in there. Post it up in the OP feedback, or if you, doesn't have to go in feedback, you can put it in the chat as well if you want. Um, I gotta change the name of the feedback. I want that to just be like, share, or I posting place. <laughs> I gotta think of a, a better name for that little chat room. Uh, but if you don't know what the Discord is, the invitation link is in my Instagram bio. You can jump in there. It's just a public free-for-all chat room session for penmen of people and people of, of like interests. So, uh, yeah. That's all I got to say. Again, thank you very much for hanging out with me. I had a blast. I hope you had a blast as well. And now we're going to end this live. I want to try this. Ladies and gentlemen, good night. Oh, it worked. It went dark. Except I can't do that and hit end stream at the same time. So I got to get my mic <laughs> and hit end stream.